Bateman is suing her ex-boyfriend, Michael Ash, and his wife, Deanna Robinson, for unpaid return of her property. Court, come to order. Be seated, everyone, please. Hello, Judge. I Baseman versus Ash Robinson. Miss Baseman, your last name is Ash. Ash. Mr. Ash is a former boyfriend of Miss Robinson. Was his fiance, then his ex fiance when he moved in with you, and is currently his. Car- um, we got married two days ago, so we're. we're well, congratulations! And wife. Congratulations! Thank you. I don't know what the cause I have is against Miss Robinson. Uh, because she put a stop to me contacting Mr. Ash to get my property back. Just a second. An order preventing you from contacting him or her? No, neither. She had written in text message that if him or her family at all, she will take legal action. Your case is dismissed against her. Okay. Have a seat. Figure out what your cause of action against her was because you don't have one. Mr. Ash, you and your now wife were engaged and living together. Uh, For eight years, all that, we were together. We got engaged. Then we had a falling apart for roughly eight months. And all, I was um, even misplaced from my house because of... Okay, it was your house. Yes. So your current restraining order against you. Yes, ma'am. And the restraining order put you out of your home. Yes. And while you were put out of your home, you reconnected with the plaintiff you had known in the past. Yes, ma'am. And asked her if you could move in. She did let you move in. You stayed for a while and then developed a romantic relationship with each other. You hired a lawyer in order to get back into your house. No, ma'am. How did you get back into your house? I had gotten of how to file the proper paperwork so I could represent myself. Who did you get the advice from? Um, Chris, um, sitting. It's witness. Correct. Did you get the advice from her? Because that's her profession. She is a paralegal of some sort. No, ma'am. Was the advice, what did she charge you for it? For the first initial to get back in my house, $250. And in what month was that? November of last year. And else filed for a protective order against you? Yes, ma'am. And who was that? Uh, Ex-girlfriend times two before Miss Robinson. The unluckiest guy I know, Mr. Ash. Yes, ma'am. And did, again, you use the plaintiff's witness to help you with that situation? And what was her fee for that? Uh, $1,200. And all of this transpired while you were living with the plaintiff? No, ma'am. The 250 happens in Duluth, Minnesota, with, with the Ms. plaintiff. Basement. The 1200 I was back in my house at that time. Were you back in your house and still to Ms. Baseman? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you were still together with her? Yes, ma'am. And where did you get the 1450 from? Did Miss Money? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I want you to tell, because that's part of what she's suing you for. Yes, ma'am. Tell me the circumstances surrounding her giving you that money. That uh, me being legally bound by these people that I shouldn't have to go through this, that she was going to help me get through this with for legal advice. And what were you doing at the time? Not working, ma'am. How were you supporting yourself? I am currently still unemployed. Yourself. The basic system. Well, tell me exactly what that is. I'd like to know what the basic system is it, for you. I've, we've been here doing this for a couple of months. We've had so many basic system. <laughs> I want to know what your basic system is. I receive MFIB from the state of Minnesota. What is that? Uh, parent and child. They give you uh, food support, medical. I also receive child support for my son. Okay. So you have one child. When you lived with Miss Baseman, did you? No, ma'am. Where did he stay? Uh, same town, across town with his aunt. Were you still getting money for him when he yes, was ma'am. living with his aunt? Yes, ma'am. 300 bucks a month. And how much were you getting personally for yourself? In child support, none. I don't receive any... Uh, not child support. I'm told you're not supporting yourself on $300 a month, sir. No. So what other monies do you get from any uh, oh, source? Oh, MFIB. Well, tell me how much you get. It varies from 150 maybe 250 depending on how much child support came in that month. 150 or 250 a what? A week, a month? Mo- when was the last time you were employed? Five years ago. What kind of work did you do five years ago? I was a courier driver. And what stopped that? 
too many admin comp cases and eventually my employer got tired and said we're two open cases and dismissed me and that was five years ago yes and supporting yourself for the last five years i'm not going to ask you i'm going to ask the plaintiff how does he support himself he oh. has his own home because it was his home that he was put out assume you own that home no ma'am. no you rent it yes how much is your rent Let's subsidized see. renting sixty dollars a month Describe the house for me. Uh, bedroom, uh, townhome. Two bedroom, two bath? Two bedroom, one bath. For which you pay $60 a month? Yes, ma'am. Have you applied for any federal assistance? I've been attempting to try to get Social Security, which has been just a dead end. Because they ask you what your disability is. Annalisa Baseman claims her ex-boyfriend, Michael Ash, is responsible for unpaid loans and returning her belong- Mr. Ash says part of your lawsuit is for this $1,450 that you paid to your witness. There's no issue that you, because he says that you paid that money to the witness and you received it from her. Yes, I did. When did you pay her the money for his two domestic violence cases? Uh, January 11th, and then the rest was paid- 2021? To- yes, and then the rest was paid to you in April. Now, you had moved, according to your complaint, after he stayed with you for a while, and he was successful in regaining his house. She got out of his... You took an apartment for you to have together. No, ma'am. I have my own house that I pay for on a... Okay, he came and stayed with me... Well, that I understand. ...for two weeks. Then we went back to his town home where we were spending the... Spending just the weekends. Just the weekends. But he was staying there. Yes, he He was staying staying there. there. You came and just spent weekends. Yes. Well, was that January and April of 2021? Yes. And it continued on up until June. Annalisa Baseman, claim friend Michael Ash is responsible for unpaid loans and returning her belongings. Okay, Mr. Ash says part of your lawsuit is $150 that you paid to your witness. There's no issue that you paid that money to the witness because he says that you paid that money to the witness and you received her. Yes, I did. When did you pay her the money for his two domestic violence cases? Um, it was January 11th and then the rest was paid... 2021? To and then the rest was paid to you in April. Now, you had moved a lot of your stuff, according to your complaint, after he stayed with you for a while. He was successful in regaining his house. She got out of his townhome. You took an apartment for you to have. No, ma'am. I have my own house that I pay for on a monthly basis. Okay? He came and stayed with well, that me I for two with weeks. It. Then we went back to his town home where we were spending the weekends. Spending just the weekends? Just the but weekends. But he was... Yes, he, he was, was staying there. there. You came and just spent weekends. Yes. Well, was that between January and April of 2021? Yes. It I, continued I want you on up until June. What happened in June? June 5th was when it started to to fall apart. And at that point, I had what already... Gave you, what gave you a clue? The fact that Deanna Don Robinson was over there every day. Harassment order against him. Just a So she was at the townhome. Yes. How did you find that out? Uh, he told me one night when I done very much talking, he said, Deanna and I were up drinking till 3 o'clock in the morning. Even when you were home in your house? Yes. So that gave you your first... Okay. What had you brought over to his town home? I had brought over makeup, clothing, um, movies. Um, he 20 minutes from me. He lives in a different city. So I brought over food supplies because I try to do keto you know, everything. That this is a very expensive place to run a court system. Yeah. So we're not interested in the food supplies you brought over, even your makeup that you brought over. Now, you ultimately found out that they were back together again, or at least you had a suspicion, and, and only to the fact that they got married two days ago, I would suggest wishes were very good. <laughs> Tell me the circumstances surrounding you paying these two bills for him. First of all, do any more work for us until she got the $250 from before. Okay. She was his legal researcher. 
more than Before. anything. He acknowledges that. Yeah. The only question is, were you paying this because you were a couple and you were helping him out? Or was there a contract? This was a loan. There that's was what, a verbal uh, a contract. Well, that's what you're going to tell me, and that's what I'm going to try to figure out. His so far, whether I like it or not, is plausible that you were in a relationship with each other. There was another woman involved. You wanted him to be free of those stressors from this other woman and from two previous to her who also had some sort of case against him. You don't look like that kind of looks can be deceptive. <laughs> and that you as part of a couple paid this bill for him. You're going to tell me that there was a loan with it being repaid. So let me have it. There was a loan because... Well, I, you, that's a conclusion. Yes. I want you to tell me the circumstance you paying Chris. I paid Chris because he was in such a state of worrying and mental anger the different people who were who had harassment orders against him. He didn't know what to do. He was beside himself. So therefore I paid fifty dollars with the acknowledgement that after Not acknowledgement. So you were concerned about him, you paid the two hundred and fifty dollars. Well, the thing is, if anything, why would I pay her the $1,200 after she was done with the cases? I have to ask you this question. The two fifty. dollars Yes. He never paid you a penny towards the two fifty. dollars You are correct. Right. And so after he never paid you a penny from the t somebody that lives in a townhouse for which he pays $60 a month, who doesn't work... Who was going to get a job through his friend, $35 yeah, as as, an hour. Right. He hadn't worked in five years. So based on history, both his history of not working for five years and your history for the months that you lived together, he never worked. I was never aware that he never worked. He had told me that he owned his own office and that he was working every day. M&M. M&M Automotive, which is owned by he and his father. M&M Automotive. Where is it located? It's located in Esco, Minnesota. E-S-K-O. While she's looking for it, Mr. Ash, does your father a mechanic shop? No. Did you? Uh, once upon a time. When? I haven't, that business not, has not been open in six years. Attempt to make the business come open, then COVID-19 hit and it never reopened. 19 hit, didn't, didn't hit this country until January of 2020. I was actually open it up, never happened. Well, where were you going to open it? on my fa that father's property where it was originally located. Oh, I got it. Well, you say you were going to try to open it again, Mr. Rash. The property still exists. Yes, ma'am. The shop still exists. It's in my father's name. It's his property. I don't care in whose name the property exists. Where are your siblings? Uh, my sibling lives in Texas. So you're the only one who lives in this area. Yes, ma'am. Got it. Aliza Baseman has accused her ex-boyfriend, Michael Ash, of refusing to pay back loans. She is also certain of her belongings. Okay, the only other thing that you have other than this 1450, if you can't find it. Yeah, it's it, a little, it'll come up on Google Maps. Mm -hmm. I have an address, but no owner. No owner, but you have an address. Mm -hmm. What does it say, Sarah, as far as what it's... Uh, automotive and restorations. But it does list it as a current business? That I can't, I can't tell. tell you. There, there hasn't been anything recent post. The last post I see was October 20th of 2018. What kind of post was that? On their Facebook page. Google for it. Oh, really? And there's a phone number listed as well. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Did you stand up? Whether or not it's an official business, Your Honor, is uh, not the point, because it is a de facto business. Sit down. There's a review on... Sit. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Number? Listed on the Facebook page, as well as, I believe, the Yelp page. Really? Hmm? Interesting. Would you like it? No, I don't need it, actually. Is total public housing where you're living? Yes. So the last time you had a job, according to you, was five years ago, working as a driver, you had it. Yes, ma'am. But the last time, at least, there's a current phone number for the, this mechanics shop that belongs to your father. Not there. 
I assume. He lives on the property. Mm -hmm. But that's a current phone number for the shop. No, ma'am. No. That number is disconnected. A year and a half. What happened a year and a half ago? When that number went offline. What happened a year and a half ago? That's when everything was totally gave up on. Uh -huh. Of hers, do you still have at your house? Her patio set, which is on the outside. Okay. You want that back? Yes, please. Okay, you can go pick it up within five days. Okay. Mentioned the patio set. He mentioned the patio set. What else is there? There is um, a lot of DVDs I'm, I'm, that I'm I own. I'm Four special books. Her fiance gave to me that were handwritten in that he created has because I was reading them over at his house also too just a sec Mr. Ash do you know what four books she's talking about yes ma'am the one behind because she had wanted nothing to do with Chris and her fiance I don't care you know which four books she's talking about yes ma'am she's going to patio set what else also he has the original paperwork on my second house where did you leave it? It was in his... Have you looked in your truck? Yes, ma'am. Do you have the paperwork? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So she's going to pick up the paperwork, the four books, and the patio furniture. Five days. You can take a marshal if you believe you need it or send I something. will have to because he called the police on me the last time when I was over okay, there. Okay. So we'll give you one can take it with a police officer for a standby and pick up your property. That sounds wonderful. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, he's not giving you back the 250 nothing about a loan. Now we're going to hear about the 1200 which came later. Let me hear about the 1200 which came after he didn't pay you anything for the... The 1200 was supposed to be a loan because we were moving into a new place together. And with that fact being said, off his bad debts in order to raise which bad, his... Which bad debt? I thought it was for her. No. What, no. What did you pay off of? Paid off two different things, and I do have what? the evidence here that I'm looking them up, Your Honor. One is a check for IC System, $1,124.90. What is that? What is that? It's an old debt shh, that he shh, has. Shh. What is that? It's a collection company on my credit report. So it's probably been there for a long time. Yes, ma'am. So what's the reason that you wanted that cleared? I did not. She insisted that I have a clean record to be moving into this new house with her. To a new house? Yes. Okay, well, that's what I thought. I thought I read something about a new place. What moving into? She was purchasing a... His wife, Hannah Gilbert, for unpaid loans, car insurance, and filing a... Fire. All rise, court come to order. Have a seat, please. Good morning, Jeff. Number 1053, Gilbert versus Gilbert. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Gilbert, this is your son. Correct. And the young lady with him is his wife. Your claim. There was a time that there was some domestic difficulty in your son's home. At that time, he came to live with you. You claimed that during that time to him for an attorney. Correct. And also extended another loan for him for a car. Correct. Your son and his wife ultimately reconciled. And you claim he stopped paying on the initial loan for an attorney and the car altogether. Correct. You also claim that at some point your daughter-in-law filed against you. Correct. A restraining order that the allegations were false and she didn't show up at the hearing and that was dismissed. Correct. Okay. You, Mr. Gilbert, when were you and your wife married? We got married um, November 4th of 2019. And you have children together? Yes, ma'am. Two? Yep. How old? Son is four, a uh, little girl that just turned one. So. I gather that you and your wife were in a relationship well before you married. If you have a four-year-old, how together? Uh, we've been living together for about six years now. Have you been living together independently on your own in your own home? Yes. In what month and year did you and your wife... As far as after we were married, we separated January of 2021. When you and your wife separated, where did you go? I went to stay with my mother until I was able to find something in town. Give me the date that you went to live with your mother. It would have been the first week of February. How long did you stay there? I was there probably about four days. Four days? Yes, ma'am. While you were with your mother, and I assume that the separation with your wife was not an amicable one. Correct. You, were you seeing your children? When I first separated, yes. There, after about two months, no. Why? There was a restraining order that was put against me from my wife. Two months, everything was okay, and you saw your children. Yep. Not, yep, yep, is not an answer. Yes, is yes. an answer. And what did your wife allege in order? That I was stalking her. Were you? No. 
Did she withdraw the restraining order? Yes. How much after she filed it? I had to actually get a restraining order removed. You went to a hearing? Yes. And was the restraining order denied? Yes. So the lawyer was helpful? Yes. Did your mother lawyer? Yes. Now, at that time you were living on your own? Correct. So you had to have gone to your mother and let her know that you had this restraining order in place? Yes. What date you were served with the restraining order? Uh, the second week of February. I'm confused. You said you separated and you went to her mm -hmm. around the first week in February. Yep. Yep is not an yes. answer. And I asked you about visitation after you separated and your months were okay. That would be February and March. Correct. But you just said you were served with the restraining order the second week in February. Well, did the restraining order stop visitation? No. Okay. So the restraining order, you continued to see the children. Yes. Until what day? End of February. Well, that's just a couple of weeks. Yes. So you were mistaken. Yes. Did you have a hearing at the end of February? No. To explain that to me, Mr. Gilbert, if she filed the restraining order the second week in February, is that when you filed it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. When you file a restraining order, you appear before a judge. Did you appear before a judge? Yes, ma'am. And did you ask that your husband stay away from you? Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Not the children? Not the children. So when the restraining order was first issued, it was just staying away from you? Yes, ma'am. Wet and request that he stay away from the children. I did not request that he stay away from the children um, because we have children together. It's not my, our children's just, fault. Just well, your husband says that it became difficult for him to see his children, and I want to know when that was because I have to figure this law. When and under what circumstances did it become difficult for him to see his children? It was the month of March. Um, he and I were having some disagreements that was really frustrating me. I was obviously a single mom at that point in time, and I just needed some time away from him and get together so that way the kids can not see mom so upset. So I stopped letting them see him because it was upsetting me with how much my son was asking about his dad, his, his dad. And so eventually we just kind of came to an agreement on things. Well, you didn't come to an agreement on things. Mr. Gilbert, did you agree? Children? No. So you must have asked for a modification of the restraining order. It was dropped. Well, was it dropped in March? Uh, it was completely by the end of February, I believe, totally. Well, I want to know why it is he wasn't seeing his children. Did you agree not to see your children? No. The way I was seeing the children was through her mother, and after a period of time, um, her mother was not answering any questions as far as when I would be able to see them, when I could pick them up. So that's when you decided to retain an attorney? Yes. In March? Yes. Now I'm getting the picture. So the two of you weren't talking. You were talking through an intermediary was her mother. Correct. Her mother stopped responding to your calls to see the children, which is when you Retain the retained attorney. an attorney, so your mother, mm -hmm. because you didn't have money. Right. And I'd like you to tell me what the conversation was with your mother. When I went to my mother, I explained to her as far as a retainer. Oh, tell me what you said to her and what she said to you. I went to my mom's house and I told her, tell me what you told I haven't been able to see the babies. I need to get a lawyer to get something going so I can see my children. And what did she say to you? She said that she could help me out, but she didn't have the full 1500 I told her it was $1,500. The retainer was $1,500. Yep. How much did she say she had? She did not have all of it. Um, she could come up with about 1100 in which case... Okay, so she handed you $1,100. Um, I gave her the cash, and then we went down to the lawyer my next day off to get the ball. Gave your mother $400. Correct. And she wrote a check to the lawyer? Uh, cr uh, debit card, yes. Mrs. Gilbert? Yes. Is it correct that he, hundred you put in 1100 Yes, it was actually 458 to be exact. And I just paid it on my debit card, the total 1500 You 458 Correct. I'm sorry, it was 468 I'm sorry. Okay. So let's speak piece before we get to the car piece. John Gilbert's claims her son, Nathan Gilbert, and his wife, Hannah Gilbert, owes her for unpaid car insurance. Now, the attorney appeared with you in court? We never went to court. I had ended up canceling the whole divorce thing due to the fact that me and the wife come to terms, everything was okay. And that was in March or that April? It was in March, yes. Miss Gilbert, did the attorney return any part of the retainer? She did. How much did she um, return? It was three seventy-two fifty. 
661. 661. Minus this portion, yeah. Okay. Did your mother discuss the return of the $661 to her? Did you ever give her any $100? I was waiting to give her money after the attorney had contacted me as far as what was returned to her, in which case I had made weekly payments thereafter. Payments? Yes. To your mother? Yes. The okay. The first one was 200 and then there were $100 increments over the next three weeks. So you returned $200? First week, yes. And then? $100 a week, weekly. For, for how many weeks? Three weeks. So you still owe her $161. Is that? Okay. Mrs. Gilbert, did your son return to you $200 the first week, acknowledging the loan? No, ma'am. He didn't. I never received a $200 payment. How much did you receive in payments from him? Um, I received a total of $300, one on the May 15th, May 29th, and May 8th of $100 each. Do you have Mr. Gilbert and gave your mother a $200 payment towards the attorney's fees? No, I don't have the proof for the 200. I do have the proof for the uh, for 300. She said you made 300. Yes, I okay. cleaned out the truck and Oh, uh, okay. So we have 361 at the car. When you and your wife separated, did you need a car? Um, I received this car in 20 of 18. Okay. Explain to me surrounding the as car. As far as the circumstances, right. um, there was an issue with my sister's vehicle that her my sister's vehicle no longer ran. My mother approached me as to if I wanted the vehicle, I was just going to keep the vehicle that I had already bought from her boyfriend. Okay. And my sister was going to get the new vehicle. Okay. So this was a sort of an interfamily swap. What arrangement did you make with regard to the car? Did you I, get a new car? Yes. I told my mother that I had just paid off a tool bill. Um, that I was able to give her 50 bucks a week. That would be the best option as opposed to my sister not working at all, not being able to guarantee my mother any money whatsoever. Okay, so you wanted a new car? Yes. You wanted a new car. What kind of car? An 11 Ford Edge. Do you remember what you paid for it? Um, the total price was $4,200. Okay. Do you have the bill of sale? No, I do not. Do you? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to. Thank you. Right now, you got a newer car for 4509, and that's in 2018. Correct. Sarah, take find a 2011 Ford Edge. It what? ranges from 4200 to about 5300 Today. So that's probably right on. Okay. And how much of this 4509 did you pay back? I paid two fifty. Is that correct? No, ma'am. You have receipts for these payments? I have the last two receipts of when they were paid off. That is all. Me and my mother were on good terms. I just handed her cash on Saturdays that my wife would actually take the children up to see my mother on Saturdays. That's Every what, Saturday. what we did. I was sure my mother was still seeing the grandchildren. You mean this is when you and your wife were together? Yes. Okay. How much is it, Mrs. Gilbert, that you allege that on the car? He paid $1,090 total. <laughs> And he says he paid thirty-two fifty on the car. That is incorrect. I told him approximately three weeks ago that he still owed thirty-four twenty, and he did agree to that via tax. I'd like to see that. Are you counting in the money that you paid, Mr. Gilbert, because not only the car, but the insurance? Uh, as far as the insurance, the insurance was something that was never agreed upon. She told me that she was going to have her name on the registration that way to the vehicle. Just a second. Mr. Gilbert, so I asked you a simple question. What you didn't give me was a simple answer. Does the thirty-two fifty that you paid your mother, did you pay a separate insurance policy on the car that you and your wife were driving? No. So I that this thirty-two fifty encompasses both insurance and the car payment. No, it was just the car payment. Well, who paid for the insurance? Ah, that's ridiculous, Mr. Gilbert. That's what Why I tried to you, explain to her. What do you mean you tried to explain that to her? I tried to, to explain her? to my mother that I did not need her to carry the insurance, that I had other vehicles for me to insure it with my other vehicles. But she insisted on having the insurance and... Just a second. Is the car in your name? It's in both of our names. My mother... Maybe it was to ensure that there was current insurance. What other vehicles do you have? I currently have a 1998 BMW. 
and my wife has a 2013. Pay insurance on those cars with what company? Through uh, a nationwide. Uh, okay, the no. total after dropping the BMW because that no a 360. Just a second. So you currently only have a 2013 car and this car. Yes. That was purchased a team. Correct. And now on the one car that you have, you pay 300 and how much? How much did he say he paid that he has insured? It's 300 and something. Whew. Was Wait. for the Toyota and the BMW. Just as, no, you said you, W. What you said was we dropped the BMW because it's no longer running. Is that what he said? That's what he said. And he, he said, said he so paid. the insurance is now. Three, six. Because there is a loan on the vehicle and it has to have full coverage. It's my vehicle, ma'am. I, I uh, carry high because I'm considered a liable driver being young with a loan. Insurance is very expensive. So why would it have been cheap? With the, Mr. Gil with the multi-car discount. Oh. Dawn Gilbert is accusing her son, Nathan Gilbert, and his wife, Hannah Gilbert, of refusing to pay for a car loan and the... In so now pretty steep breakdown of a relationship between a mother and a son. Very quick four week period. Mr. Gilbert, how do you think that happened? Due to the fact of me getting back with my wife. <clears throat> my mother does not care for my wife. Um, after I told her that I was moving back home, she told me that her house was no longer a storage facility and I needed to come pick up my stuff. Otherwise, it would be sitting outside. So be a good lesson for your mother and for everybody else out there that, you know, until things sort of calm down with somebody else's relationship or marriage, and to keep your nose out of it. The problem with you and your mother is you had a close relationship with your mother. Yes. And I'm certain that you and your wife separated. You unburdened yourself to your mother. Yes. And when you unburdened yourself to your mother, without getting into the specifics, some very ugly things about your wife. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh yes. is not an answer. Yes. And at the time that you said those very ugly things about your wife, you leave you. Yes. Because at the time you said those very ugly things about your wife, you believed them. Yes. See what happens? See, your mother, of all the same elements that you do, she loves you. She clearly loves her grandson. All she knows is you told us some very angry about your wife with whom you are now together. Yes. You can't do anything about that, Miss Gilbert. That's it. Right. That's it. You got it. Can't do anything about that. It's his choice. But if you're a smart lady, if you're a smart lady, Thank you. and if your son is smart, he'll recognize he has one mother. But the degree is better than 50-50, so chances are that you got a 50% shot. Right. You only have one mother. Mm -hmm. And it was a mother who was... For the most part, yes. Who clearly adores her grandson who I don't know if she sees anymore. No, ma'am. All I'm telling both is that that's being unfair to him. I understand. You know, controlling children, which is clearly something that happened time with your husband, you control the children because it was clear that if he couldn't see the children with you and your mother made it difficult to children, so that means you were using the children as a control which is really not supposed to happen if you're a loving parent. I control their influences. No, it's supposed to happen is if you're a loving parent, you want the widest possible community of a village, them, to be part of them so that they can feel as if they have a safety net that they grow up with as many safety nets of love in their life as though if you and your husband are off for an evening in a casino and your car gets blindsided and T-boned and both of you were gone, that there's a safety net for them. You don't want to take that away. It's unfair. In any event, I don't want to hear about this protective order. Actually, Mrs. You survived it. Did you hire a lawyer for the protective order? No, ma'am. I just oh, okay. went down and um, all right. So he owes you thirty-two fifty, which he actually sort of for the car, and three sixty-one for the lawyer, which is thirty-six eleven. Mr. Gilbert, Mrs. Gilbert, marriage is up and down and up and down. You have a child. Your child loves you. Clearly, your child had a relationship with his grandmother. Right. Yes. You should, really should be of making sure that that relationship continues. And you try to put a period, just as you put a period with the anger that you felt towards your wife. Right. 
you put a period. Yes. I would try to do the same with my mother. Judge for the plaintiff, we're finished. Thank you. Court is adjourned. Uh, it was fair as far as the amount that was owed. I did not want to pay her what she was asking for. I'm glad that it's over with, and I hope everything gets taken care of. I tried to get this settled out of court. She refused to work any kind of deal out, and here we are. Being told I was being petty for wanting to be... I have no idea. The fact that me getting back with my wife, I have no idea. That is true, but it's not my marriage, it's theirs. Um, they started off when me and my wife first got together when we were dating, and it seem to tinker downhill. I hope our relationship can be put back together. I really do. Uh, if she can be caught, not throw rocks, show up at my work threatening me. I just went and asked him if we could talk like adults. Then there's a possibility, yes. I'm glad it's over. As someone who would grow up with many safety nets, I think that was a great lesson in there to the, both the defendants that taking away a child's safety net, some sort of ill will or harbored resentment against a parent is just unfortunate, legal issue or not. So I thought that was a great lesson. I always feel sorry for grandparents who love their children and then get themselves involved with a breakup, which happily takes sides right away before the situation has sort of calmed itself down and you see in what direction it's going. You know, I didn't know, but I'm sure he said a lot of nasty things about his wife when he went to live with his mother. She saw how hurt he was. She developed her own resentment, spilled over. But, you know, you got to love your children. More than you hate each other. Rachel North for stolen packages and punitive damages. For come to order. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case number 1181, Ortega versus North. Welcome. Mr. Ortega, you and Ms. North are neighbors. Correct. You live on the same floor. Correct. How long have you been living in your apartment? Since January of 2021. That. I lived in a neighborhood in West Hollywood with a roommate um, not too far off. For how long? Maybe a couple months, not a whole lot. Where were you living before that? An address. What does that mean? I didn't have a home. So you were homeless? Yeah. So you were homeless for a long period of time. For two years. Then you moved in. You had a roommate for a couple of months. Then you moved in in January 2021 to an apartment. Correct. Who found you the apartment? Can you look at me? Look yes, in my direction. It's just something that happened. I can't really talk about that part. <laughs> well, some things become important. Now, who was paying the rent in your apartment? I was. Source of employment. I got a settlement. Okay. How long have you been living in your apartment? 17 years. In the 17 years that you've been living in the apartment, have you ever been arrested? No. How old are you? I'm 46. How many times have you been arrested in your whole life? In my whole life, one time when I was in college. I tried to help break up a fight that my friend was in. Not since college? Correct. Now, Mr. Ortega, it is your claim that the defendant who's been on your teen years is a thief. Correct. And you claim two different things. You only have proof of one alleged theft, and that was a... May 20th of 2021. Okay. So May of 2021, you're going to show me proof that Miss North stole something. I have it right here. I'd like to see it. What do I do here? Now, clearly that's from your ring thing. Yes. And I want to show this, Kevin, to the defendant. I don't know what it shows. Okay, so that was me leaving my apartment with a bag or a package or something. I didn't realize I ordered so much stuff, but because I'm defending myself, I found over 100 packages on Amazon and Bloomingdale's. I have to return those things if they don't work out. No, what I'm asking you is, you say that that's your bag, the yeah. white bag. My apartment with my own bag. Okay, so your toes are close, very close They're, together. I have a photo to show you how close they are. I have I'd to like walk to. by his I'd door. Like Before we get to that, or make sure we're looking at the same. Your Honor, I also have pictures, if you needed, of her taking that stuff in large. I did him, Your Honor. Okay, listen to me, Mr. Ortega. I want you to tell me exactly what it was that you alleged that she took from your apartment that was in the white bag. Look at me. Yes, ma'am. 
what was it in the bag that you allege she took from the front of your apartment? Uh, orders. I bought some stuff from Macy's jewelry, mostly. Just a second. This is date and everything that shows that it was delivered and it was a lot of jewelry and I never got that back. I ate with Macy's and they were kind enough to send some of it back, which was nice, but not all of it. What do you mean? You made a complaint. I filed a complaint with Macy's. Like that I, you didn't receive your... Yes, that's correct. And Macy's responded. To, yes, they responded with me having to file a police report, which And did. did you do that? I did. See it. Me about a police report. I'd like to see the police report. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, I have video evidence. Okay. That's evidence of me. No, 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 no. You filed this report on March 25th. That's correct, ma'am. Mole May. You just told me that this alleged theft happened May 20th, 2021. That's correct. How do you show me a police report that you filed in March. Your Honor, I did that because a lot of my packages went missing. Ah, a few of them. I only want to see you filed after May 20th. Um, I called the police and no one showed up because okay. um, it's not a life right, emergency. All right, forget We're done. We're done. How can now, that be, ma'am? Uh, we're done with May 20th. But then you I have no proof. And I do we're done. Proof. There's video footage in that. I saw the video. I asked you. There's my Macy's confirmation that it got delivered on that day, ma'am. That's okay. Yeah. And you filed a complaint to Macy's that yes. you never received. They resent it. Yes. They yeah, resent that, it. That's but a yes. What? She took that's, other packages that's as well. Yes. Well, I don't know that. Right. Show me. Yeah. Yes. Is your... I mean, she took other packages as well. Sure. I didn't take any of his... She just... Okay. And I also have... No, no, no. Complaints sure, about... No, no, no. Show me. Show me. That's her. And taking... Just don't tell me. Don't more tell me. in trash bags. Don't yeah. tell me. She does take that. take my garbage out. Just that. <laughs> okay. There's boxes in that. Okay. And there's also a box there. Mr. Ortega, it. Mr. Ortega, the other part of your complaint is that you're a burglarized. It was. And it was burglarized on what date? October 27th, 2021. And she lives right next to me and she wouldn't even. I didn't have any just knowledge a second. of this. You were there talking with just me. Just a second. Okay. I, it's just ridiculous. I'm sorry. This is silly. I'm a busy time. October 27th, 2020, your apartment was burglarized. That's correct. And you believe that the defendant was somehow... Yeah. Just don't look at me. I you do. believe that the defendant was somehow responsible. I do. What your belief is, is irrelevant to have proof. I'll show you that proof, ma'am. That the defendant was somehow responsible for the burglary. I'm assuming, question that your apartment was burglarized. It was. Eldardo Ortega claims his north stole multiple packages from his doorstep. Now, I'm assuming for the sake of this question that your apartment was burglarized. Good. I'd like to see the police report first. Kevin, you can return this to him. It has to do with March before the last theft. Yes, ma'am. Just jump with regard to 10 27 20. Well, this says that somebody has been arrested for the burglary of your apartment. I assume for the burglary of your apartment. Yes. If the defendant is convicted, you may be entitled to restitution. That's not a police report. Let's understand that. That's just a notice that somebody has been a Ortega. You had to have filed a police report. I did. Show me the police report. That's all I got. Because I called the police when that happened because she wouldn't do it. Oh, just, 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 she's my neighbor. She's just, so close by. She could have oh done that. Oh, my God. At least. You're ridiculous. Just no. a second. It's, it's not. What, it's a nice thing to do what, to a neighbor. You're a scammer. Mr. Ortega. Right. It's what you're suggesting, because Miss North is your neighbor, it was her responsibility... It's not... To call... Just a second. To call... Is that what makes you think she was involved in this burglary? No, ma'am, but it, she also didn't need to be involved in our other neighbor. She... Uh, he obviously goes too high as well. And Who? that's the person... Can I see... No. Yes, ma'am. Can I see what you're talking about? There you go. So that's one of our neighbors. There's an elderly person there. That's yes. not her. The case is dismissed, Mr. Ortega. You have no, no case against Mr. North. No. You do it. You do it again. 
You do it again, she's going to sue you for defamation. That's not right. That's not right do you understand? I don't care what you think is right or not. I lost my You have. You need you know, proof. She doesn't like me. She never did I like me from my home because I, I was homeless. I don't even know. I didn't know he was homeless, Your Honor. What is he doing? I'm thrilled. I mean, his, he's ridiculous. He's a scammer, and she saw right through it. I've had packages stolen. Everybody's had packages stolen. I don't even want to live there because it's so horrible to live there. I'm not a criminal. I'm not a thief. She's going to be stuck with me, I guess, for a while. That plaintiff seemed a little off to me in his explanations and even in the suggestive video footage. Something just felt off. Certainly no proof she was involved in any yeah. burglary or theft of packages of his. And it's not a crime to walk in and out of your, your own apartment. apartment. <laughs> but his mind, and that's frightening to live next to that. Yeah. Case number 1173, Bourbon versus Maine. Please step forward. Julia Bourbon is suing her ex-boyfriend, Jacob Maine, for a broken window, broken ignition key, towing fees, and a risk. How long have you known Mr. Maine? Uh, I met him in 2019. When did you start to date Oh, gosh. It had to have been August of 2019. August of 2019. Who were you living with? Uh, my mother. And the dates actually become important because this sounded like a love affair, that, mm -hmm. but there was a lot of fighting and forgiving. And I have to see whether the fighting part is something that courts get involved with when I between a lot of the fighting was a lot of forgiving. Where were you living, Mr. Maine, in August of 2019? I was living in Paso Robles with my shortly after I'd moved into my father's. Okay. So from the house that you shared with your now ex-wife, you moved in with your father? Yeah, shortly afterwards. Yeah. And when did you? Probably the August of, later in the August. Did meeting the plaintiff have anything to do with precipitating your divorce? Probably. Okay. That's fair. Come a time in August or sometime thereafter when you moved into Miss Bourbon's mother's house. Right. When was that? October. Did you pay any rent? No, ma'am. And you shared her room? Yes, ma'am. You stayed there from when to when? November to maybe June, July, something like that. Long. Did you have any problems when you were living in her mother's house? No, not until the very last week or so. Why don't you tell me what happened the very last week? That's part of the complaint. Me and Julie were arguing, and I think her mother kind of caught wind of that and didn't really like that, and so she uh, kicked us out, I guess you could say. Yes, ma'am. When Miss Bourbon's mother asked you to leave, you moved in with your father? Yes, and you moved in with him, with his father? Uh, for a short time, yes, ma'am. June of 2021? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. So then let's deal with this incident quickly that happened in April, which while you were living at your mother's house. Don't look at your document. Look here. If you tell the truth, you don't have to have a good memory. Not that I'm particularly in April because then we had a subsequent May and June and July. Why don't you tell me what happened? Quickly. Me and Jacob were arguing, and uh, and we, we went outside because I didn't want to argue inside. So I realized I had locked myself out without the key. So I went and I climbed through my bedroom window, access to the house, and as I was closing the, the window, he slammed it back open and it shattered. Had the situation resolved? No. What were you going inside for? To unlock the door, the front door, to get back in. To let you both back in? Right. So the situation had somehow resolved because your mother wouldn't hear you yelling. Yes. Am I getting this right? You know, you keep saying yes, but am I getting this right? Yes. I'm trying to create a visual for myself. Mm -hmm. Now, window breaks, sir. She slammed it closed, and I put my hand out to kind of brace for it, and it really just bounced off my hand and went to the other side of the windowsill and broke it. Is that what was happening? No, um, I, had, I had almost closed it, and he grabbed it, and he slammed it back open. I was going to go unlock the front door to let him in. On April 4th, when you were at your mother's house, did you share the same room? Yes, we did. Did you share the same room from April 4th until June 22nd, 2021? No, no, we didn't. He went back to his dad's house. Julia Bourbon claims her ex-boyfriend, Jacob Maine, owes for a broken window, broken ignition key, and a refund of rent. So after the April 4th incident, he left? Correct. Is that right, sir? Yes, Your Honor. Between April 4th and June 22nd, how many nights is father's house? Probably five or six. So I actually don't care what happened with the window. Neither to courts. It's a word called condonation. If something happens and you had a big fight and then you get together and you snuzzle together and you sort of make up, we don't go back into history. That's not what courts are for.
June took Jacob and informed me that his dad was moving and did you want to move into the house? Yes, he offered. And it sounded like a reasonable idea to you. You were psyched with each other. Yes, Your Honor. Still hoping to make it work. So according to what I read, your father was supposed to move out. You were supposed to move in and split the rent. And you gave him $350 in rent. 310 Did you ever move into his father's house with him? No, I did not. Okay. You said there was an incident on the 26th of July. Do you want to tell me what that incident was? Sure. We were in Lemoore, California, and we were arguing. And uh, Where? I had pulled over into a, a Best Buy parking lot uh, because I needed to get away from him just, just to cool down. And when I got out, I saw him reach for my and Then I got back in the car and noticed that my ignition key was broken. He didn't admit to it, but, I mean, it was broken, so... It cost me a um, place from the Mercedes dealership in Fresno. And also, since my car wasn't in a legal uh, parking stall, it was towed. So you pulled into a parking lot, park lot, key was broken out of the ignition, and the car was towed, and you want him responsible for that? Yes, because okay. I, was, I wasn't able to move my car because my ignition key was broken. 26th, the last time you saw each other? No. When was the last time you saw each other? About a month afterwards. Where was that? So you went there? Yes, yes, I did. What time did you go over there? I would say about 6 p.m. Tell me about that visit. He had promised to pay me for things that he owed me for. And so I went to his house because I didn't have his number. Okay. What happened, sir, when the plaintiff came to your house? I mean, she pulled into the parking lot and she got out of the car. So I reached over to turn the ignition off and it's not like a key. It's like a chip that you put into the thing and it, it just it broke off. I would pay, you know, for that. It was my fault. But before that, she broke into my house and then destroyed all my clothes. Now, you've just acknowledged to me you did break off whatever key was. Whitney, did he say it was my fault? I thought he said it was my fault, which is a good thing. Unintentionally. Intentionally, but it was your fault. Right. Yeah, he said I would pay no for that. It was my fault. $414. (laughs) Okay. What happened at his house at 6 o'clock, and... I waited for about 20 minutes, and I saw him walking up, and I said, hey, do you have any money that you can pay me for the things that you broke? And he said, I'm not going to pay you for any of that. And? And so I said, well, that's that's not right. Um, and then I left. Did you go to his house and cut up some of... No. All of my clothes. No, I did not. Did you ever discuss with him the fact that his clothes were destroyed? I did, but it was in December. That's just as you did? Yes. When did you discuss with him that his clothes were destroyed? I don't agree that I cut up all of his clothes, but the the incidents that he's referencing, January 2021. Tell me what happened. Uh, I discovered that he was cheating on me, and so I went into his house. I didn't break in. You went discussing on you, and you were angry. Yes. So you went into his house. And I cut up some uh, some of the clothes that I had bought. Tell me what you cut up. An Alabama shirt that I um a pair of pants that I paid for, and some underwear. That's it. What was the discussion that you had with him with regard to replacing items? There wasn't any discussion about it. Well, you said there was some sort of discussion that you had about the clothes. Yeah, well, he just accused me of cutting up, oh, but we didn't agree. We didn't talk about me replacing it. What did she cut up? Everything. Where did she leave it? Right there in the middle of the floor. Two weeks after, maybe, three, two and a half weeks after she paid the 310 and then decided not to move in. Well... That hissy fit's going to cost us. That's part of your lawsuit. You can't go into his house and cut up his clothes. That's a no-no. And you, sir, have already acknowledged that you owe her for the broken key. It was false. Indeed. And I've already decided that there was condonation with regard to the window incident, which to the window incident, which I don't really understand why you would want to go out of the house to have an angry discussion when you could do it privately inside the house. Cause, so I'm not following that whole thing. But afterwards, you made Mufki Pufki for a couple of months, so I don't care about the window. But the $414, you acknowledge that you owed her. The three, you did pay for rent. You never moved in. You're still living there with your father. You can't cut up his clothes. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $414. We're finished. Goodbye. Have a happy life. Court is adjourned. She stole my phone and really had nothing on it. His phone. I, I saw his phone. And then she kept it. Could have settled it out of court, I guess. You know, the concept of condonation was a term that was originally, I think, in the context of being married. I think there might be some hesitation about teaching this idea in law school. Just because if courts don't get involved in those minor issues cohabitating, I think 
they can circumvent wrongdoing and, and not take accountability if they say, well, we slept in the same bed after that incident happened. So courts, you don't want to discount the negative interactions that people have living together or not, but it's we in- can't get involved in every squabble. It's interesting because in one respect, you are saying wrongdoing is being rewarded. As long as you're sleeping in the same as room. As long as you're sleeping in the same room. We're an important enough incident. Yes. There is some abusive behavior that is important when you have that and you break the relationship, pursue a remedy. I think that remedy has to be taken seriously. Mm-hmm. Common sense. That's what the law supposed Taylor is suing wedding planner Carlos Sanchez for a deposit on wedding services. Court come to order. Be seated, please. Hello, Judge. Case 1060, Taylor versus Sanchez. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Taylor, I assume it is my husband. And you're recently married. When were you married? We're actually married October of 2019. That must have been a small party. Yeah, we asked. But at some point, you were planning a larger wedding. Right. And in contemplation of that larger wedding, you hired Mr. Sanchez to be your wedding planner. The core cor- planner. Yes. And this case is about the return of your deposit that you paid to him because the wedding was canceled because of. Okay, that's your general claim. But it gets a little more complicated than that. When was your wedding originally planned? It was originally planned for 19th of 2020. Where was it supposed to take place? In Downey at the, the Rio Hondo Golf Course. How many people were you having? How much was the venue? 13 and some change. 13,000, sorry. In what month did you secure the venue? Maybe January of 2019 or 2020. Fine, let's say January 2020. And when did you locate Mr. Sanchez? In January. Paid at the venue? Yes, ma'am. Did you sign a contract with him? We did. Okay, I'd like to take a look at it. Okay. Well, this says terms of the contract, decor, rentals, chocolate fountain, food. It says client will have food tasting to pick from the food for the event. Food service will include. I think that's just his general standard contract, but all we had was the decor and rentals. Everything was coming from the venue itself. Well, then I don't know what this is. Contract must be paid in full within 30 days before the event for every week that passes without final $100 fee. I don't know what you signed here. There's no price. Keep going on the other few pages behind it. You'll see the breakdown hours, um, the rentals. At the bottom of the page, you'll see where the deposit was paid and the balance. Actually, it's a ridiculous contract because if you're referring to an annex document, this doesn't say anything. This calls for a deposit. What? It's in the first page. And the one in the back is the first page. And then it's the second page. And the, the other one is the last page. Show me the contract. Sir, show me your copy of the contract. This is how to be. Like that. Okay, it's still a ridiculous contract. I mean, it's just a, the way it's for ridiculous. It's not filled out. Do you understand? T- total deposit, it's blank. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I, this is your uh, Angelus at you? The Angelus event, yes. All right. Well, what I'm telling you is this has to be it's filled out. We do, I'm sorry, it's because we do a lot of service for the flowers and for the decor. Just a second. The, it has to be in a contract that she signed. I'm just telling you, for future reference, blank space is filled in the total charge, the amount of deposit that should be in this contract. What's signed is sort of in blank. All right, fine. So you hired him in January of 2020. The event was supposed to be September of 2020. That's eight months later. Between January 2020 and September of 2020, did you meet with the defendant? We did. We initially... Go. Okay, go ahead. Tell me the dates that you met with. First meeting was January 10th when we signed the actual contract. Um, Where did you meet with him? He came to our home. Okay. We signed the contract that day. Uh, okay. But you met him the beginning of January when you first took the hall, took yes, the ma'am. venue. 
And then he said, well, come to the house. We'll discuss do. He did. Mm -hmm. Did he show you any photographs, any pictures? He did. Okay. Um, so that took a while. How long was he there? He was at the house two hours for the initial well, meeting. Well, just a second. He was there for two hours. And you must have been satisfied because you signed this contract. Yes, ma'am. And that was January 10th. When was the... I, I don't when was know the next the time next you were time there, Mr. I Sanchez, or the next time you saw the plaintiff? After I went to her house, we went to that venue, the 25th. You went to the venue with yes. us? Yes. Okay, what did you do with the venue? So when we went to the venue, we showed them the outdoor space and kind of our vision, and we talked through about options and placement of flowers and just different options of draping and whatnot. And about how long did that take? It was more. Did you see him again? We saw him, or I saw him, I went alone, um, February 28th, to do a mock setup. Okay, and where did you... Yeah. So we were initially going to get married in September. I contacted him literally two weeks after signing the contract to push the wedding up, because my dad was diagnosed with cancer, and we wanted to do it sooner rather he than later. You wanted to do it six months earlier? Yes, ma'am. Kenesha Taylor claims wedding planner Carlos Sanchez wrongfully kept her deposit after a mandatory lockdown. Okay, that's free. Venue was free. And he was free. He was free. So that you had to get moving faster. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so now you contacted him. That I understood. So you contacted him again and things started to move a little more quickly right. because now he had less time. Right. And you met him again. So the last the time, of February 28th, okay, on when he did the mock setup. Okay. And did he show you several different designs? We did. How many different designs did he there show you? There were tables that he set up that he showed. And then in his showroom was the different um, options that he had well, for... Just a second. Did you go to his show? Did you go to the venue? Not that day. We went to the venue once where we talked about, you know, looking at Vision, the But scheme. this time you went to, I went to him. him and he said with two different options consistent with what your initial discussion was at the venue. Right. Okay. And you selected one. I gave him the second deposit of $3,000 that day. Okay. So the first deposit was $1,000. Yes. Second deposit was $3,000. Yes. In total, you gave him $4,000, which is what you're suing for. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you think you're entitled to $4,000 back? I think I'm entitled less the setup fee that he incurred, the actual fees that he incurred. That's what I was asking for. Well, what about all the time he spent with you? At time just a second, I'm, I'm just asking you. He spent with you probably at least five to six hours. Okay. In total. Not including that he did independently when you weren't there. He spent five to six hours with you mm -hmm. and your husband. Is he not entitled to be compensated for that? Yes. Oh, yes. But my question would be, like, again, it's not in the contract. I feel like he just kind of pulled a number out of the sky, just like he pulled well, a $500 you're... contract sky. Like, that was nowhere discussed. That was it's just kind of something he... It's not discussed because nobody anticipated right. that if he was in mid-March... Well, late March, but yeah. Late March. And on March 15th, the state was shut down and you couldn't have a wedding. Mm -hmm. You itself hadn't done anything for you other than hold the date. And a tasting. Just, we did a just, tasting with the you, venue as well, but yeah. You did? Venue. Did they charge you for that? They did not. Did they give you back your full deposit? Yes, ma'am. That was very nice of them. Did you have a wedding there, ultimately? We, it was very nice of them. They did a tasting. It's a big operation. But there's a certain amount of work that he performed. You know, how do I explain this? You to see a dentist. And the dentist is performing a whole procedure to put in a crown. In order to do that, there are procedures. They have times to do a root canal. Then they may have to shave down a tooth. And let's say the patient dies before they can get it. Does that mean that the dentist doesn't get paid for all the work that they did? No, absolutely not. They'll bill. Okay. I get it. So he did work. Mm -hmm. You want to do is you want to put a value on his hourly time. You're employed? I am. Are you paid by week, every two weeks? I'm a salaried employee, but I get paid every two weeks. Okay. And how much do you make approximately per hour? About 70 bucks an hour. And what kind of work does works he Works for the oil refinery. And is he a salaried employee by weekly or is he by the hour? He's hourly. 
And what's his hourly wage? He makes about two bucks an hour. How much do you make an hour? So you know exactly. 42. So here you have two people. You make $70 an hour. He makes 42 who charge $600 an hour for their work. Mm -hmm. And there are lawyers who charge $1,500 for their work. They're both lawyers. You're allowed to set a rate. Once this contract is no longer in existence, and there's an impossibility in this case, it's not or his fault. It became an issue of impossibility of performance. Mm -hmm. And then it's up to us to try to find, oh, since it's impossible for either one of you to perform ultimately the contract, he's entitled to be paid for the work that he acts for you. That seems only reasonable and fair, and that would come under a theory of quantum merit. How much is it worth? Mm -hmm. So he offer you as a refund. $2,940. Is what he gave you back? No, he gave me nothing back. This is what he offered me in the form of a coupon. He offered you $2,940 back, which means that he was charging you $1,000 in effect for spent in the work that he did. Not necessarily. It was a breakdown. So the deduction was $500 contract fee that he implemented. It was time, time $70 per hour. And then for the actual setup, it was $280 that he was actually out of pocket for the setup. And so the $2940, again, wasn't even in the form of a refund. He said these were coupons that well, could just... be used back in his business three different times. If he offered you twenty nine forty, that would seem to be a reasonable figure. If he offered you twenty nine forty back in cash, because, right? Do you understand that, sir? That would seem to be reasonable. I understand. Okay. Nisha Taylor is accusing wedding planner Carlo of keeping her deposit. Carlo says Kanisha refused his offer to reschedule the wedding. If he offered you twenty nine forty, that reasonable figure. If he offered you twenty nine forty back in cash, because you paid him in check. Right. Do you understand that, sir? I understand. I offer her a credit for. No, no, we're not a credit. You were out your time and whatever actual money that you spent setting up the tables and or what the venue might look like. You're entitled to that. But no one knows how long COVID is going to impede the ability of someone to have indoor gas. You are unable by law to perform this contract. Do you understand? Yeah. You're unable by law to perform this contract. She is on our part and pay you to perform this contract. So in my judgment, you are entitled to a certain amount of compensation for the work. Then you, with the exception of giving them a tasting dinner, did nothing. It didn't buy food. It didn't spend any time with them other than the initial show venue. You signed the papers and then you went for a tasting. And it opened itself up so that he could come in and look at the venue, which is nothing. They were out no money, nothing. They really didn't spend a lot of time with you other than they would with any customer, just as the first time you spoke to him. The second time he came to your house when you discussed, well, I would say he's entitled to be compensated for that. And you're compensated at the rate of $70 an hour, right? Yes, ma'am. So let's say he's entitled to be as you are. Reasonable? Six times seven is $420. So wait, Judge, but he said four hours. In the initial one, he said he only spent four hours with me and that to me. I'd like to see it. Even you said he spent five hours with you. Well, what I'm telling you, you said you right. spent five. Okay. So you made flower samples? Yeah. Tips times $70 an hour. Look at that. Times four is 280 and flowers were 190. And want to tell me what company $500? All that paperwork obviously reserved that tables, the letters, and also that well, flowers. show me. Yes. Show me. You already have the yes. as one ninety. You're getting credit for that. So far, we're to four seventy. I'd like to see what you did to reserve. Where are the contracts with the table companies? They are my tables. Oh, then you're not entitled to that. Too. No, no. Well, okay. Can I can I say something? Yeah. Okay. When she canceled it, it wasn't. No, she didn't cancel well, it because of COVID. The contract that you rendered was unenforceable by law. It was unenforceable figure. It was a little bit more than four hours that you spent with her. 
but you're not entitled to making a contract with yourself. I mean, if you engaged in relations with other vendors for chairs or anything else, I would consider that. But so far, you didn't. So the contract was unenforceable. And based upon your own statement to her, the time that you spent was four hours. You're entitled to that at $70 an hour, which is exactly what you earn. And the flowers that you put together were 190 so that together is $470, and therefore you should return to her $3,630. Um is not an answer. No, no. I want to know what else you did. If you did something else, tell me. We make sure that table and that letter is her table, and also... Those are your things, you said to me. That's your property. But we didn't sell it to another person because you couldn't we already sell it. have... You, c- we couldn't s- you couldn't sell it to, or rent it to another person no, because no. everything else was closed after March. Exactly. Everything else was closed. You could yes. Of course, no. Of we, course not. Yeah. Okay. The cancellation of these events brought havoc on the venue business for well over a year. Probably, as I said, you're entitled to be compensated, and I certainly would not give her back $4,000 because that would sort of be like her missing if they closed the plant where she was working. And she would say, well, I was here. I'm ready to do my job. And the plant would say, listen, this is COVID. But I actually came to work there every day. I did work from home. I expended time. She would want to be paid. You're entitled to be paid. But by your own analysis, what you're entitled to be $370. And so she gets her deposit back. Less that three hundred and seventy dollars. Thank you. We're finished. Thank you. What is adjourned? I'm happy. I I I agree with her. I think it was very fair. I don't think it's fair. Uh, everything with a COVID, me, it was very difficult. And I tried. I sent texts. I sent emails. Um, I had a lawyer send a demand letter to try and resolve it before we got here. Um, but I'm happy. To get back money right now is very difficult for our company and obviously myself. Time to live happily ever after now. I like to be more clear. So although it wasn't my best class in all of law school, one thing I do remember from contracts is the importance of a force majeure. It allocates uh, the risk of loss if something unexpected happens at no fault of either party. And in this case, they really could have benefited such as that because they could have stated who was going to pay, what the refund was going to be, how much she was compensated for time if the wedding did not end up happening. So I think really review your contracts before signing them. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I didn't actually think of force majeure, but that's exactly what it is. It pro- precludes either mm-hmm. party from performing the terms of the contract and defining what their responsibility is, if any, if something from going... Friend, Regina Monaghan, for totaling his truck after driving it without his permission. Court call rise. Be seated, please. Hello, Judge. Case number is Chagong versus Monaghan. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Chagong, it is your claim that the defendant drove your truck and totaled it. Yes, And the defendant, in sort of retaliation for that, you burglarized her home, terrorized her children. I have a couple of questions before we get into specifics. And the defendant live in two different states. Where do you live? I live in Chicago, Illinois. And the defendant? Minneapolis, Minnesota. How long do you know her? Probably a little over a year. Where did you meet her? Social media, end of 2000. 19. What kind of work do you do? I'm a event operator who set ups and tear downs of major events. And sometimes your work takes you to Minneapolis. Yes, ma'am. So you were looking for companionship when you were there? Not ship, just a good time whenever, you know, I'm there because I have my daughter there as well. So that's me and more. Daughter my, where? In Minneapolis. How old is your daughter? She's five. Her mother? Yes. Who you don't live with? Right. So when you go to Minneapolis on business, you get to see your daughter. Yes. But you also want to around with. I'm just trying to get right. the... Yes, ma'am. I'm just trying to set the <laughs> stage of this story, Mr. Chagall. Yeah. <laughs> now, when was the first that you met? Well, I actually met her. I can remember it was around my birthday. I don't know when your birthday January. January of 2019? Um, Where did you meet? I believe we went downtown Minneapolis at a bar. You met at a bar? Yeah. So I assume at some point you went to her house. Yeah, yeah, later down the line. <laughs> I know. So there did come a time when you, either alone or with your daughter's house. Yes, ma'am. 
How often during a year did you go to Minneapolis? It'll probably be two times, probably once to two months. So my question, Mr. Chacon, <laughs> probably what you're telling me yes, that you went to Minneapolis twice a month. Yeah. That means you went there 24 times a year. Times a year. <laughs> there we go. And when you went to Minneapolis 24 times a year, did you stay with your daughter's mother? No. Did you sit? No. Did you ever stay with the defendant? I stayed with her, yeah. Let's take the year 2019. Okay. Because she's going to answer this. And certain things make sense, certain things don't make sense. If they don't make sense, they're usually not true. You understand? All right. In 2019... Of the two dozen to Minneapolis on business and to see your daughter, how many times did you stay at the defendant's house? No more than probably three times. What about in 2000? Never. Never in 2020? Never. What about in 2021? Never. So the only time that you stayed over in her house was in 2019. When you stayed at her house, was your daughter with you or not? My daughter was with me. Did you have any sort of intimate relations with the defendant when you stayed over in... Here and there, yes. Here and there? Yeah. Okay, what about in 2020? No. What about in 2021? No. So after you had a relationship in 2019, you saw her regularly in 2020? No. Not at all? No. How many times did you see her in 2020? The last remember seeing her is when I left my vehicle at her house. And when was that? That was June 24, 2020. Okay, so Teen, you did in fact have a relationship. So forget 2021, the last time you saw her was June of 2020. Yes. After you had intimate relationship with her in 2019, your children met, they played together, I assume at her house. Was there a decision made that was a mutual decision that any more social relationship would just be friends? No, that was the understanding from the beginning. Just well, friends. it wasn't for understanding from the beginning, because if you had an intimate, a guy's idea of what's intimate relationship and a girl's idea of what's an intimate relationship are often two different things. Did you ever have a discussion to work yeah, out? Yeah, yes, ma'am, because she know that I work and travel No, don't tell me what she knew. I don't want you to go into her mind. No, I told her. I told her that I travel. It, tell me what you said to her. I told her we can be friends if you want to be intimate. We, co we can, but it's no strings attached to that. Okay, that's so we can be friends with benefits, but yes, it's not going to be anything more than that. Yes, ma'am. Is that your recollection? No. Okay. I mean, it's honest, but it's... How did she react when you said that to her? She agreed to it. She said okay? Yes, ma'am. Now we're going to fast forward to this June of 20. Tell me where you were, what you were doing, how you contacted her about leaving your truck at her house. Well, I was actually my daughter to um, bring her down to Florida due to me about to be going for work for two months. So when I... Okay, let's go slow. You were coming to Minneapolis, daughter. Yes, ma'am. From Minneapolis, you were going to fly to Florida? I actually drove. What car? I had another vehicle. Well, how did you get two vehicles from Chicago? No, I have two vehicles in Minnesota. No, I mean, you have two vehicles, but one behind. So you had two cars, yeah. according to you. Yeah. You wanted to leave the truck at home, and you were going to drive from Minneapolis to Florida no, with your daughter. No, brother, my brother took me from Minneapolis to Chicago, and I flew from Chicago to Florida. Where was your other car? Florida, ma'am. With whom? That's the, my, the car that my brother drove me down with. He has the car. My brother uses the car while... I don't use it. And so... Is your brother? My brother's in Florida right now with the car. So your brother is in Florida? Yes, ma'am. Had he been in Chicago? Yes, ma'am. Did he relocate to... Fl so he was relocating to Florida, and that was in June of 2020? Uh, no, ma'am. He just moved there. He's from Chicago. He stayed in Chicago, but he just moved up to go. I'm still not following the car business. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, the truck got left behind, and we <laughs> used the other... Okay. So you were, what? Am I missing something? No. no. Are, you, are you telling me that there's something that I'm not on you? Okay. Just as long as we're all confused. Okay. <laughs> Tell me how you contacted the defendant in order to ask her if your truck at her house. Well, when I came to Minnesota, I was coming to get my daughter. So by my daughter is very friends with her daughter. Let them no, no, play. no, no, no. You were coming to get your daughter. Yeah. And you had to have notified her that you were coming. Yeah, because I wanted Just... them to see each other again. Before... So you called her from Chicago. 
No, Minneapolis, ma'am. You called her once you got to Minneapolis. Yes, ma'am. First from Chicago. No, ma'am. And she didn't know you were coming? No, she didn't know. It was just random. It was random? Yeah. Okay. So you called and said what? Hey, I'm gone for a while. Do you mind if they want to play with each other? Her daughter always been asking about my Oh, come God, don't tell me what her daughter's been asking for. Hey, maybe I girls want to play together for a little while. No, How she... much time did you... <laughs> <laughs> no, she's told me advance, hey, my daughter misses your daughter. She tell you that? She called and told me, of course. When you were in Chicago? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So you spoke to her on the phone? Yeah, we would communicate. That don't mean I see her. Go, hey, my daughter misses your daughter, yeah. and she's trying to yeah. stay close to you. Thank you, yes. I understand that. I told you men's brains and work totally differently. The Chicago claims his former friend, Regina Monaghan, totaled his truck. Regina is for burglary, vandalism, and child endangerment. Men's brains are in boxes. They're all separate. They can take out, I should play date, and then they put the box away. And then they can take out, I need to leave my truck someplace, and then they put that box away. <laughs> Women's be different. See, everything is intertwined with everything else. So what you needed was a place to leave your truck. And she didn't know that you wanted to leave the house until you got there with your daughter. No, it wasn't me needing somewhere to leave my truck because I have family in Minnesota, so I didn't need her house to leave my, yes. How did you get to her house? No, look at me. <laughs> look at me. It gets harder. How did you get to her house of course with I your drove, daughter? Of course. You drove in what? My truck. Okay, so now you have one truck, one adult, and a five-year-old. Right. Who picked you up from the house? From who? Her house. Well, you left the truck there. My brother did. Your brother picked you up there on what date? The 24th? Yes, ma'am. About what time? Um, that morning, so around like 8 or 9 o'clock that morning. 8 to 9 a.m.? Yes, ma'am. And when had you picked up your daughter? On the 23rd? Yeah, yep. The, the day, yeah. So you picked her up on the 23rd? Yes, ma'am. So if I'm putting this all together, you stayed at her house until the 24th. Yes, ma'am, ma And then you left your truck there and your brother picked you and your daughter up from her house? Yes. On June 24th? Yes, ma'am. Now, when you slept at her house, did the two girls share a room? Yes, ma'am. You see, I've been around <laughs> a long time. You don't get to be this age unless... <laughs> I am running out of room. We haven't even stopped. <laughs> So the two little girls shared a room. Yes, ma'am. And you shared a room with her. Yes, ma'am. So that was the sometimes we were talking yes, about. Yes, ma'am. And when you got, it was picking you up there by prearrangement at 8 o'clock in the morning, because yes, nobody gets up and randomly comes at 8 o'clock in the morning. Of course. So you had clearly spoken before truck at her house. Yep. Not at some other people's house. No. Not at anybody's house, but you had told me previously, Whitney, if my memory, let's go back, discussion of leaving the truck at her house. By the way, while Whitney is looking that up, Sarah, you look up 1999 Chevy Tahoe. Just give me a clue. Your Honor, based on 1999 Chevy Tahoe, it's 3000 to $5,000 is the range. Okay, thank you. He said, well, when I came to Minnesota, I was coming to get my daughter. My daughter is friends with her daughter. I said, well, let them play because I wanted them to see each other before they go. He didn't need to leave his truck because he has family there. Got it. Okay, so your family, by prearrangement, picked you up at her house. Yes. And you left your truck there. Yes. Where exactly did you leave your truck? It was actually inside of a parking lot off the street. She lives in an apartment complex? In a townhouse. Car in a spot in the townhouse? Yes, ma'am. Was it a guest spot in the townhouse? Yes, ma'am. And you were going to be gone for a couple of months? Yes, ma'am. Truck there, I would assume that you also left the keys there. No, I did not. You did not? No, I did not. Okay. So what you're suggesting is Fenton jump-started the truck because your complaint is that she drove the truck. Stole it. No, no, no. She didn't steal your truck, sir. You parked your truck, according to you, in her apartment complex. So let's be clear. Either she jump-started your truck by crossing the wires, you know, like I've seen them do in the morning, or you left the keys there. Don't look down there. You never know where I'm going. If you tell the truth, you don't have to have I'm a good telling, memory. I'm telling you, you the truth. So the keys was with me, I thought, so she stole just, them. Just, a, when I just left. a second. You said, the keys were with me, I thought. Yeah. You were wrong. Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> Apparently. Apparently. Yeah. 
Okay, so you left your truck in her town in a guest spot for two months. You want me, this face, to believe without leaving her the keys in case there was an emergency of locusts. It's the summertime. Lo locusts. It's the summertime. It's no emergency, ma'am. It's the what? summertime. It's no emergency. There was no reason why my vehicle should have... Um, That's what you said. Emergencies? There are always emergencies. The car next to it could have caught on fire and they could have had to have moved all the cars. There are always potential emergencies, Mr. Shigong. So I want you to understand this. This face doesn't believe that you didn't leave keys there. This face doesn't believe that somebody who planned carefully to go to Minneapolis to have a play date for his dog, play date for himself, and then go to Florida and leave his truck someplace safe off the street for two months, also leave his keys. This face doesn't believe that. That's your face. Good. So I want you to remove the word Lynn because I don't believe it. Now, that doesn't mean she touched the car, used the car or whatever. As a result of that, and she's going to tell me one twenty fourth that your car wasn't totaled. That doesn't mean that. You were not there. You were on your way to Florida, right? Right. So it wasn't you. But there's no quirkies there with her. So this stolen baloney is just exactly what it is, stolen baloney. Did you have a fight before you left? No, ma'am. No, fight before you left. That means that you shared a bed with her. The kids had a nice play date. Your brother picked you up in the morning and she went and, and stole your keys My book bag. out of your pocket. My book bag. Your book bag. She went into your book bag and she stole out of your book That's exactly what she did. Oh. I don't believe it. Okay, now I'm finished with him. Because <laughs> at your house. Yeah. The only thing that I'm interested in is he spent the night with you there on the 23rd to the 24th. Is that true? Yes. And his daughter was there? His daughter and also his, I want to say, his stepdaughter. So you had three little girls. And I also have two little girls. Okay. So they were all, everything was fine, and he slept over, and he asked you if he could leave the truck there. Uh, yeah. It didn't actually go that way. Um, his brother came over that night, even how I knew that he was even leaving, because that's how the conversation arised. Oh, well, tell me about that. Daughter suing for burglary, fan child endangerment. Now, tell me about that. I was up drinking, and his brother came over, and they were talking about them going to Florida. So, I was. Just you? Yeah. Not them? No. Okay. Um, and they, had a, they were having a conversation about them going to Florida, and of course, I'm very nosy. I wanted to know a little more about this because we had been pretty much living together since the middle of January of 2020. We mean when he came to Minneapolis? He lived in Minneapolis. He lived in my home. Have clothes there? Had clothes there. Had shoes there? Had shoes there. He bathed there. Mail delivered there. Did he? Really? Yeah, so that night is when I figured it out. And he, I was telling him that our building is on it and that he couldn't have his car parked there that long. Like, it can stay there a little while, but for you to be gone for a period of three months, they're going to tell you. He'd been calling and coming by saying that they needed this to be moved. That You mean he had been using that parking space when he was there? It's not a guest parking. We don't have guests. It's just parking for the residents. There's only 16 slots in the, the parking lot because it's a 16 townhouse community. We didn't have guest park use the one that was designated for me, but because I didn't have a vehicle to register and his vehicle wasn't in my name, we couldn't actually register for our sticker. So he didn't. Okay. So he had been using your spot because you didn't have a vehicle, mm -hmm. but in order to park in one of the 16 spots, you had to have a sticker, a resident. Oh, you see how easy that is? You see how that makes sense? That's her house, not mine. Do you, just a second. Do you see how that makes sense, Mr. Chicago? Yep. Because that sounds like what happens when you live in a townhouse community. There are spots that are marked resident spots. Number 116 is apartment 116. And you have to have a residence sticker in order to park there. So the truck is in your name. She let you park there. Residence sticker. It was no number there to know who house parked. People parked wherever they wanted to park. So <laughs> I'm not talking about that, sir. What I'm saying is in one of the spots that's designated for a resident, you well, needed a sticker. She didn't tell me that. She didn't I, relate listen, that to me. I let you talk. Right now, you have to understand. I, okay. Great. Right. I don't believe you. Okay. Because 
That sounds legit to me. Because she gives about her house? No. That sounds Does it sound more? more? No. What she says comports with my sense of common sense that you were there every time you was that you parked in a parking spot where you didn't have a sticker. And it makes sense that when you don't have a sticker, they're going to tell you on the 24th. So on the 24th, he left about noon because I don't get out of bed at 8 a.m. and I was very much awake. Um, his brother came and picked him up that next morning, him and the two children. We were standing on the porch and he placed the keys in my hand and then he took the keys. He had to go get his daughter's car seat out of his truck and then he brought the keys back and put them back in my hand. So then they get in the car, they leave. My daughter's asked, are we going to see you again? He said, oh, um, pretty much we were going to link up in Florida. The plan was for me and my kids to come down to where he was for the rest of the summer, however long that I could have got off of work. I just had to build up enough PTO to leave. So I told my daughter like mid-August, just because it's between her and her brother's birthday. Like, okay, they left. I went on about my business for the day, put the keys in the little tin can that I have in the kitchen on the countertop. And that was that day with the car. He's on his way to Florida. And? And then on the morning of the 26th, I decided to move his car. And then in the process of that... What happened in the accident? The car was... No, tell me about the accident. There was nothing really to tell. I turned the corner and next to you... You were making a turn. Were you making a right turn or a left turn? Left turn? So you were making a left turn. Was there oncoming traffic? Well, yeah, but it was like way down there, the car that I seen. And then the other car came from through, like, so there's a parking lot right across the street. And she came like through, and that's how it happened. That's not how it happened. That's not telling me what happened. Like, in the midst of my turn, like, she came flying out of the parking lot. And? And? She hit the car, kept going. She probably stopped, like, a little further down. But I was kind of dazed, so I didn't even check to see where she stopped or if she stopped. I ended up someone... Had you been drinking? No. I don't drink in the daytime. Do you have a driver's license? No. Okay. So you shouldn't have been driving a car? Yes. Why don't you? Do you have DUIs? No. Did you ever have a driver's license? No. Never? No. I have tickets for driving, but never had a driver's license. Now I'm going to go back to you. You had other people to leave your car with. That's according to you. And there's no question that you were aware of the fact that the defendant didn't have a car, right? You were aware that somebody who had children didn't have a car. And this is somebody that I knew well and intimately, I would say to them. And the answer would be, I don't have a driver's license, so I can't own a car. Right. Right. So that... At the time that you left with a defendant, despite the fact that you had other places to leave your car, and understanding that I believe that you left the keys there, you knew his license. You have relatives in Minneapolis who have driver's licenses? Yes, I do. You should have left your truck at their house. If there was no spot for me to park it at. Well, that's a difference. You just told me, if I'm not at mistaken. At that time. Whitney, at that Whitney time. can read it back, but my mind is intact. At that you time. said there were plenty of other people in my car with at in Minneapolis. Time. Yeah, at that She's going to read that back. Right. At that time of when I was going, I didn't have time to go to way out families. Well, that's your problem. Exactly. That's your problem. Exactly. That's your problem. She was in a car accident. She shouldn't have been driving the car. You had no right to leave your car with her. My car nowhere? That's a crime now for me leaving my car? I'm just telling you that I believe you left your car there with her, with the keys, understanding that you were in a sticker and that you did have a conversation about that and you didn't give a damn. No. I, uh, just a no. second. So you don't get rewarded for that, no. Mr. Shigong. I'm just telling you. She, she didn't tell you she what? Never, she never told me, listen, ma'am, if, if, if did I Did she tell you she didn't have a driver's license? She never told me did that. Did she tell you that she didn't? Outside of her telling me she didn't have a driver's license, she never told me that the slots were registered to the owners of the... Did she tell you she didn't have a... Her answer, I said yes. Uh, Okie dokie. Again, that has you don't nothing get to do with the slots. For that. Now, we're going to get car. to your counterclaim. You have a counterclaim for... It is your claim that the defendant burglarized your home? Yes. When? July 17th, approximately about 9.57 p.m. Did you see not, but I have video footage. I'd like... ...is suing his former girlfriend, Cheyenne Madewell, for a bed and his belongings. Have a seat, everyone. Hello, Judge. Case number 1120, Brumley versus Madewell. Mr. Brumley, how old are you? I'm 32 years old. 
How do you support yourself? I was unemployment recently, and uh, I'm working for a contractor at the moment. Unemployment recently to when? For the last year and a half. I don't have the date, Your Honor, exactly. When did your unemployment end? It just recently ended. What state do you live in? Oregon. Over. Back to work. So for a year and a half, you collected unemployment. How much did you receive every week? Around don't so think I would know. I no, know it's like seven eighteen or like seven twenty a month or uh, a week. Seven hundred and twenty dollars a week. Not counting the whole extra, it's seven hundred because with the COVID they added an extra three hundred. I made four hundred and fifty eight dollars a week until the extra three hundred was going on. So during that whole time, it wasn't the whole seven; it was four fifty eight. During COVID, they added the dollars with the COVID kicker. Now you are thirty two years old. Yes. So prior to collecting unemployment, what kind of work did you do? I worked for a contractor, uh, for the city, and uh, water box contracts in Bend as well. Now, what were you doing when you met the defendant online? I wasn't working at the unemployment. Yes. Who were you living with? I was living with my grandma and kind of some friends at the time because I dealt with the breakup, so I was kind of a few different spots. And you met them in what month? That would have been end of February, beginning of March. Of 2020. This year. 2021. Yes. And the defendant was living in, yes. in a room. Yes. In what month did you move in with her in her room in her grandmother's house? Beginning of April. Beginning of April. We got together March 23rd in relationship-wise. I was trying to figure out. It was and a week later, you moved into her room. No, not a week later. Was, Two weeks later. It was a couple weeks. Three later. weeks later. Three weeks later. Yes. And you stayed there until when? I didn't technically stay there. I would give her rides to work, and I'd come stay sometimes in the beginning, and then I'd leave. And then I needed a ride to work constantly, and so then I'd be like, okay, I'll give you a ride to work, and then she offered for me to stay there with her. And What month did she offer to live with her? April. Uh, April. Yeah, that'd be like okay. April 1st. We'll say that's, yeah, sorry. April. So in April, you came and stayed time. In no, April. it was never full time, Your Honor. Okay. On the weekends, she'd visit her family. On weekdays, I'd give her rides home. And, and in the beginning, I wouldn't even stay there. No, no, I'm talking about stay there. Yeah. You start us to stay there long enough, sir, so that you got disgusted with the bed, because that's what most of your lawsuit is about. You say you bought a, a grandma's room, and when she terminated the relationship, you wanted to pay for half the bed. So you don't need a new bed unless you're sleeping there. So let's be real. What the lawsuit's about? Lawsuit's about a bed. Yes. A bed. For the most part, the bed, my clothing, and my belongings. Well, yes. you, just a second, your belongings, according to you, were never there. According to there. You just drove to work, and sometimes you stayed over, and sometimes you didn't. Your Honor, sorry. So put on a whole new thinking cap. In what month did you move in there enough so that you wanted to change the bed? Well, it's kind of a her thing, too. Like, I don't know exactly April. And it was just mutual. Like, we wanted to get a bed. We were together. We were trying to, like, move forward. And I have that stated here that, like... I don't care what you have stated anywhere. I'm going to make this suggestion. She terminated her relationship with you. I haven't even let her open her mouth yet. I understand why. <laughs> so my advice to you is, with somebody, and you don't like the bed again, get twin beds so that you can take one with you. Because she can't cut this bed in half, and she's not paid. Excuse me, Your Honor. She said that she would pay me on here, that she would do that. She's like, you buy the bed, and I will pay you part for that, too, and I have that right here. I'd love to see it. Uh... And if I may... May not. <laughs> Such a blessing. Just tell me when you need money. We're a team. That's not a contract. Well, it says right here, you, you're getting hard, and she's having no, me No, she said, yeah, you give, I'll give you money back, or you just tell me when you need money, baby. We're a team. That's not a yeah, contract. That, after the situation? That, okay, I understand that with the bed. Okay, it's not a contract. Contract requires specific terms. If you buy the bed, I will reimburse you for half the bed. Not, yeah, I'll give you money. Tell me when you need money, baby, and we're a team. That's not a contract. Okay. Okay, so get twin beds. Now, the next thing comes with a question. Uh, I moved out June 3rd, I believe, or no, it was before that. She told me on June 3rd that she was breaking up with me and that, or no, she was uh, taking care of her grandma and moving states with that. And I was like, okay with that, which is totally fine. I don't know what's going on. She's been cold turkey for a little bit. Like, I don't know what's going on. She's been super quiet, and so I just didn't understand. And then this happens. I I'm a heartless person at all. Don't get me wrong. Just a second. And you moved in there, according to you, sometime about the second week in April, part-time. Yeah. And then you moved in more full-time on June 3rd. So you were there for the month of May, right? Actually, we'll say uh, the end of May, because uh, June was when she wrote me and moved over there then. So tell me when you were there. 
I'd be there during the week sometimes with her when I... And where, where were you living the time that you... Grandmother's. Is that where you get mail? I have a P.O. box. Grandma gets tired of getting my mail, so... How long have you been staying at your grandmother's since this last breakup that you had before? Been on, but I'm just kind of figuring out my life, Your Honor. I stayed with my grandma a little bit. You did say you were 32. I'm 32, Your Honor. Like... Well, you were third done. And that's... You better start figuring it out, sir. Jeremy Brumley claims his former girlfriend owes for a bed and his belongings. You better start figuring. Excuse me, Your Honor. I said you're 32. That means you're a third done. If not all of us get so lucky to live to be 96. Oh, said, yes. 96, so I'm saying to you, you better start figuring, because the last third isn't as good as the first two thirds beyond that. Your Honor. Mr. Brumley. Can I? Mr. Brumley. Yes. Get yourself real, will you please, sir? You don't get the bed. You live there, grandmother, with whom you don't pay any rent. You live there. You didn't pay any rent or expenses. You live part-time. You live half-time. You live out of your van. You live out of your car. You couch. Okay. Now I want you to tell me what items specifically you allege that she disposed of that were yours in this place that you really all the time because you're mostly with your grandmother. So tell me what specific items and I'll see receipts for them. The best of this was to be able to go to Amazon or Google and look for different items for each item that I had inside her house. First, try telling me. I don't care what I got take PlayStation pictures of. games. I have my... Just, hey. Yeah. You had a PlayStation there that you brought to her house. Yeah, and then she changed my network password to her name for no reason. Trolling. Where did you get the PlayStation and when? I bought it offline. When? Uh, the marketplace had probably been... Uh, a year or so before we got together, so I had it for at least a year. For it. I paid 250, 250 bucks. What did you do with his PlayStation? I have the evidence right here, Your Honor. I messaged him when I was moving out of my grandmother's house, eight showers a day. He was staying I home. Listen to me. Uh, I'm not I giving you... I have the PlayStation still to this day. I asked him to pay me the money that Just he a second. owed me. Just a second. Yes. So you still have... Great. One PlayStation to you. You live in the same state? Yes. Great. Do you want him to know your address? He knows my address. What I want you to do is wrap the PlayStation. And he has five days on 24 hours notice to you. He's going to pick up the PlayStation. Do you have a porch? I have. I actually left his stuff. But yes, I have a porch. Good. Leave his wrapped PlayStation on the porch. All right. Perfect. And that's on 24 hours notice to you. So when you say 24 hours notice to me, I contact him if he doesn't. No, no. Okay. He's going to contact you within five days. Okay. All right. And say, I will be there. On the 3rd at 9 a.m. All right. Put it out. Make sure it's out there. 9 a.m. Take a photograph of it without there. If he picks it up, fine. If he doesn't, it's gone. All righty. Okay. So that's the PlayStation. What else is there? There's a bag of my clothes that I had there. I had, but I have a bag of my clothes out on the street. Just a second. Can I see that photograph? I actually have that too. Just, you know? just. Sorry. Okay. Mm. So this is a bag of clothing that was his, that you put out, and that she said to you in this picture, here are your clothes. Yes, and you have till Friday or Sunday to come get them. And then uh, I told her Sunday I would come there. Just a second. She sent you a picture of your clothes? Yes. You live in the same town? No, I don't. Where did you live? I live in McMinnville. And how far is that from where you were living with her? Uh, it's not, not too far from there. Not too far. So she sent you a picture and said, come get your stuff. I don't want this bag of your yeah, clothes here anymore, and you didn't go get them. Yeah, and I have a statement saying to come Friday or Sunday. To, Sunday, can I come get my stuff? And, and I didn't get a message or anything. I have messages of that, too. Then I would have run over and gotten this the garbage that bag was going of on. stuff. I didn't want to go into a fire right then. Okay. You know, I was like, very, very, day, very fine. This. Very good. Ed, we finished. Return of value of property. We finished. Your case is dismissed. We're done here. Get a job. Court is adjourned. Thank you. We had a relationship of a month, a month and a half, two months. It's not very long. People aren't who they seem to be when you first meet them. But also, like, that's enough for someone to get in to, to know. They have a mask over them, and you got to get to know them and watch that mask come off. And once that mask comes off, you're just like, whoa, what? Did, what is? Not sure. I got a text message in that, and then this soon after happened. I was actually really nice about it. I told him that was over. That I was moving out of my grandmother's house with me moving out. Well, obviously, you're homeless, so you. I'm gonna save my money, and I'm gonna get a way better job. And nobody make forty seven. You like that, she ain't. It's time for me and my daughter, not no man. Now, Sarah, I know, not well, but many people who have met on assorted dating apps and have had long-term relationships with them. Even some got married. Mm -hmm. You could not tell them. No. It always seems to go one, south. One, not one successful 
go around. Why do you think that is? I, I'm not sure. A lot of profiles to find one that you could be in a long-term relationship with, I guess. You know, I would say for most thinking women, usually that's what we see here, women who end up on the short end of the stick. The first thing that they should have is a job. <laughs> yeah. That's, you could actually understand why this young man didn't have a job because he made more not working mm -hmm. than he did working, which was a big problem and will continue to be in the Scott has been over the last year. And that really is a country making babies out of a whole generation of people. I agree. Case number 1122, Alboro. All parties, please step forward. Rapper Kyrie Clark is suing video director Rashad Albro for the production costs. Yo. Mr. Albro, you look angry before we start. Put your hands down. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You may get there, but I hit. Now, Mr. Clark, it is your claim that the defendant, at your request, made a music video for you, that you paid him, that he did on time, and B, did a less than professional job, which required you to hire someone else to either do it again or to fix it. In any event, what you are requesting is the money that you paid to Mr. Albro and the cost of redoing the video. Mr. Albro are initially satisfied with the video, which he acknowledges that he delivered late. He says that because of personal issues, and he had some, he was delayed by the video, but you were satisfied with it and subsequently called him and told him that there were things that were deficient. That's the case? No. That's not the case. After Kyrie Clark claims video director Rashad Elbro owes for the production costs of a music video. Kyrie also claims Rashad stole his video concept and used it with a different artist. The part that you are questioning is the part where he says satisfied? I told him that I was satisfied. So what is it? Rapper Kyrie Clark claims video director Rashad Elbro owes us of a music video. Kyrie also claims Rashad stole his video concept and used it with a different artist. The part that you part where he says you told him you were satisfied? I told him that I was satisfied. So what is it that I was mistaken in suggesting that it was? Okay, so I'm gonna explain, Your Honor. No, don't explain. Just tell me the one thing that is not correct. The main issue is that he basically took my original name up with and he made sure that his cameraman panned me a certain position so that you couldn't see anything aside from, it goes from my head all the way down to my knee. My props with the original idea that I came up with, which I have documentation as well, and he made sure that it wasn't in my video and he put it in his client's videos. Did you trademark or register an idea that you had? No, I do not, but it is in my notes that I told him the idea of what I doesn't wanted. Ma it doesn't matter. Okay that you have issue is that he used some of your ideas in a second video that he did that had nothing to do with you? Yes, because he okay. made sure that he didn't put okay. it in my video. I told you in the concept as well. What I'm telling you is, unless you do something to trademark an idea, it is really not intellectual. See, I don't understand, you know, making music videos. What I understand is making parties. So I'm gonna bring it to something I understand and then we're gonna to get to what is action. Wonderful guy. And he's been doing parties for me forever. He has outrageous arrangements, food and cakes and cookies. The thing is fulsome and wonderful. And it's really a, not only a delight to the palate, but it's a delight to see, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that I knew was a friend of the family who said, gee, I'd really love to come to see one of the parties set up because maybe I can get an idea or two from what he's doing me in my career. I said, you want to come? Come. You can't. Because you've envisioned something and you put it out there, you don't hold a... So what mm -hmm. you're saying to me is you had certain ideas about how this was going to be portrayed, this music mm -hmm. video, you had certain props, and he can say, gee, that was a terrific idea to have a pumpkin, to have a dancing strawberry, to have whatever you know what? it was. I'm sorry, Your Honor, I, I, but honestly, your cake story, it is not my story, okay? When I came up with this original idea, let me tell you something. I used to actually live in L.A., okay? I was in the street. I got my head sliced open while I sleep on the beach. I got my head cracked by security when I sleep at a restaurant patio. Everything that I went through, that is why I came up with that. I put everything that I just told you about, I put that in my track. That track is five minutes long. 
Okay. You feel what me? I'm telling, so, so thank what you. I'm, what oh, I'm ahead, telling you is that you're con- I'm suing the defendant, Rashid Albro, in the amount of $1,302.02 for a refund on the video shoot and fix his work. That's what your complaint says, sir. That's what I'm hearing. I, Do you no, understand? What I, what, I, what, I put down, what I put down is that I'm suing, I'm suing for the $50 Kevin, for... Kevin. Okay. I just want you to read what I have okay. that you're suing for and has been served with. And that, Mr. Clark, is what you are bound to today. Mm-hmm. Kevin, I'll take that back now. Okay. Well, that's... Want, Mr. Just, Clark, I, I at it, Mr. So Clark, I mean, I Mr. Clark, I'm going to take it back now, Kevin. You got it back. Mr. Clark, when you file a defendant in any court action is then put on notice of what you are suing them for, what they have to defend. He is put on of what you're suing for. And I'm telling you, today, the only thing that I'm hearing mm-hmm. is what you put in your complaint. Which way? Well, well, I don't Mr. know Clark, what it says. Mr. I don't know what it says. Mr. I don't know Clark, what the complaint says. Mr. Clark, that would be your fault. How is it my fault? Because it should be in there. But I don't know if it's in there or not. You told me to read it. You, you want me to read that whole paper in 10 seconds? No. And then you asked for it back? No, that's what you signed. Oh, well, didn't oh, you that... give it to me to read? You signed it, sir. But I read it earlier, and earlier oh. it's not what, you, what you're oh. saying that's well, on there. Would you show it All to him again? All you're saying is that I'm suing him for just Quiet. the video. So I have, okay. Don't sound foolish. Oh, if you I'm signed not foolish. it. Who's oh. the real one sounding foolish? You're talking about I read no. it. You, you wanted me to read it. Fuck. Either you read this before you signed it. I did read it, so why did you hand it to me okay. if you wanted me to read it again? Oh, well, I don't like your attitude, Mr. I don't Clark. Care. So, Mr. Clark, attitude. Okay. I think your attitude is disrespectful. And you're not making so any sense. You tell me to so read stuff and, you, and, and read stuff in ten seconds. What, what sense does that make? So you want me to read stuff in ten seconds? So this is Go, do what you do. I am dismissing your case without yeah, prejudice. Yeah, because I'm not you a hater, and you, you really are not intelligent at all. In which you originally guess what, baby girl? I really don't care. We are done here. He messed me over because he saw the original idea that I came up with everything that I've been through in my life. I'm not sure. Like, we, you know. So my original idea and made sure that wasn't in my video. Then I paid him a backhand payment super early when I really didn't have to. He was happy with everything after the after he received the video. Business associates, I've never met him a day in my life. He said he was a videographer. I seen him on Facebook and I liked his work. That I didn't show the props that he wanted shown and that I didn't deliver on time. But guess what? I did my part. I did my part. I did my part. The universe know all that. I did my part. After all the argument and text message, in, and I told him we wasn't doing that. So that's probably what he mad about. That's probably why we here today. Sarah, you just saw an example of... He's suing his former landlord, Randy Simpson, for motorcycle damages and a wrongful eviction. We're coming to order. Have a seat, please. Case number 1180, Ziegler versus Simpson. Thank you. Mr. Ziegler, this is what I put together from your complaint. You were looking for a place to live. You had no place to live. Yes. Mr. Simpson, and in that house, he rents rooms. He has a lot of tenants. It's a house that you own, is that correct? Yes. And you've owned it for how long, sir? 30 years. Now, he agreed to rent you a space. He didn't have a bedroom, but rented you a space, at least temporarily, at the beginning of July. Yes. And you lived there for approximately four weeks. I got kicked out on August 6th. So five weeks. Yes. You claim two things. He illegally evicted you, so you want a lot of money for that. And your second cause of action is that you drive a motorcycle and that Mr. Sim allowed one of the other tenants, someone whose name is Todd, that would be you, to drive his truck and Todd your bike that was parked behind the truck. Correct. Causing some damage to the bike. Now, you lived in the house for five weeks. And uh, your first name is Todd. What's your last name? On Moberly. Mr. Moberly, you acknowledge that you knocked over the Mm -hmm. motorcycle. The defense that Mr. Simpson is raising is that Mr. Ziegler had parked his motorcycle behind the truck, but parked it on the sidewalk. He hit someplace else. And I assume you have photographs of that, Mr. Simpson. I yeah, assume we have, have photographs of, of the that. driveway from... Did from you... Well. So I'm going to ask Mr. Z. time of the day did this happen on August 6th? This happened late at night, probably around 8.30, 9 o'clock. Where? Um, so... No, I, that's a question. Uh, that doesn't... That's not a so. 
Where had you been I prior went to the to store for five minutes and came back. Just a second. Motorcycle. Where had your motorcycle been parked? So the driveway was... Where had your motorcycle been parked behind before you left? Right behind... And you moved it. I never moved the motorcycle, no. You said this incident happened at 8.30. I want you to try to concentrate. I said, where were you before this incident happened at 8.30? You said, I went to the store for five minutes. Before you went to the store, motorcycle parked. Behind the Tahoe, on the driveway, in the driveway. And then when you came back from the store, you parked in the same place. Drove my car to the store, not my bike. And I left my bike behind the Tahoe. Where was your car parked? On the side of the street, since the driveway was completely full. Car was parked in the street. In a legal parking space? Yes. You left the bike where it was. You took the car from a legal parking space. The driveway was full. You went to the store for five minutes, 8.30. Then you came back. Did you repark your car? No, I, I parked it. Still had it before, where I always parked it. Okay. And you went to the store to get what? To get a Gatorade. When you came home? Mm, from getting the Gatorade. Went to the store to get one Gatorade. Yes, because I was just on a, a, a... You were thirsty. When you came home, what did you see? I saw my bike on the ground up. Is that what happened? Yeah. Did you pick the bike up? I tried to. It was a little heavy. I saw it. it came did up. you pick the bike? What did you do with it? Um, I moved it um, away from the back, and I put it kind of in the garage, in a little space in the garage. How did you... I picked the bike up myself and brought it into the garage. I didn't drive it or anything. Oh, just a second. You picked it up and you walked it into the garage. Yes. Just funny. Why would you park your bike behind a Tahoe if there was space in the garage? Because I went to the store real quick and I left my... What is bike? You took your car to the store. You said your bike had been parked behind the Tahoe because the driveway was full. Yeah. But you just took the bike and you walked it into a space in the garage. My question to you is... If there was a space in the garage, why would behind the Tahoe? Because I was going to go for another bike ride again later in the day. Later on in the day, it was 8.30 at night when we were going to go for another bike. Um, well, because the, the cars were super close together and there's not, it's, it's kind of hard to maneuver it around those spaces. After you moved the to Ziegler from behind the Tahoe into a space in the garage, did you call the police? Yes, I did. Why? The evidence that it happened and everything, and because that he told me that later on he first admitted that he would. Oh, no, no, just a it. second. Just a second. Conversation with Todd. He couldn't pick the bike up. He says it was too heavy. You picked it up and you took it into the space. Did you have a conversation with him? Yeah. About the conversation that you had at 8 30 at night after you came home from getting a Gatorade. So, first he was telling me that, you know, he's responsible for it. No, no. What happened? You know, so far, I'm not following your whole story. Yes. You do understand that. Yes. Okay. Ziegler claims his former landlord, Randy Simpson, owes for motorcycle damages and the cost of a wrongful eviction. So what happened? He said, I didn't see your bike behind the Tahoe because it was dark, right? Is that what he said? Yes. I assume that that's what he said. Mm -hmm. And you, I'm, I'm still not figuring out why the police were called. Okay, because then later on he said... Later you know, on when? Um, about 20 minutes he said, I will not pay for the bike. In Just a second. So now you're inside the house. You've had your Gatorade. Your bike. Mm -hmm. Your car is parked on the street. You have another conversation with him in the house. Tell me what you were in the living room. What? I was actually outside looking at the bike, looking at the damages, assessing how much the damages would be. And... Um, I told him how much it would be. Tell him it would be. I said it would be roughly, a rough estimate would be around $1,000. Okay. So you said it'll cost about $1,000 to fix it. And what did he say? He said, you shouldn't have parked the bike behind there, so I don't owe you anything. And okay. Yeah, that's it. And But you previously, I let you him shouldn't, know. Just a second. Okay. So he said you're back there. I don't owe you anything. Mm -hmm. okay, well, that's a lawsuit. Yes. And you called the police. Mm-hmm. Can I see the police report that you... I have a video, too, of the whole thing going down as well, if you want to see some clips. 
on my phone. Tell me what they're of. Okay, they're of him admitting to hitting the bike. Yes, <laughs> and it's him admitting that I told him previously not to go anywhere and I'd be back in five minutes that the, my bike was behind the Tahoe. You have that on your phone? Yes. That, and I'd like to see the police report given. So it's these two, this one and this one. That's the first one. And then the police. Took place. That's what it says, remarks. Took place in the driveway. I'd like to see. How much? Um, I just, he told us going anywhere. At the time, I didn't really think of anything I needed to go. Then he left. He said he's going to be back in two minutes. I forgot he told me back in my. Got it. Okay, so the problem, Mr. Simpson, is it's your car. You got the insurance. Yes. Looks like he was high as a kite Mm -hmm. on this video. Mm -hmm. And if you allowed him access to that car, you're responsible for this damage. You were? Well, Mm -hmm. he probably was, and you are. So you have an estimate to fix the bike? Yes, I do. I'd like to see it. Have you had it fixed? Yes, it got done with the shop a couple days ago. Estimate, how much was it? That's the final. I have a text message that shows it. Just tell me what the final invoice it was. It was the 1134. Now for unlawful eviction. Yes. After this incident, the police were called, and I want you to tell me your version of what happened with Mr. Simpson. So, as you recalled, I went inside, you know, inside the house, going towards my room, where his room's right across the hall from mine. And so he said, Alec, come. So I did. And he said, in my 30 years of living here, I've never had someone call the police. And he said, get out of my house and yelled at me. And I did not feel safe in that Jaden and let him know the incident and asked if I could spend the night at his house. After the incident, he's going towards his room. You call him into your room. Third time, Mr. Ziegler's called the police to my house. In the five weeks he's living there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my roommates were ready to kill him. Okay. Uh, some written testimony. No, 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 no. Yeah. I don't read written testimony from people yeah, who are here. Yeah, I understand. Here. Okay. Did you tell him to leave? Yes. Mm-hmm. And you didn't? Yes. You moved in on the first. You were paying a couple of hundred dollars, but then you moved into a room for $400 a month. Yes. Correct? Day in July, did you start to pay $400 a month? So, well, it was $200, the agreement, the verbal agreement with Randy, but I actually asked for my money back because I just paid him for the beginning month of August. And he, he, he was telling me, he, well, he should be charging 400 instead of 200 $200. Did he give you any money back for August? He did not. Did you pay August's rent? Yes. How much did you pay? $200. You moved Maria to a room? Yes. That's why he was increasing your rent to $400. Where are you living now, Mr. Ziggler? Um, I'm living in Lee Place in an apartment. And how much was your rent there? Uh, it was 700 So it was much more money? Yes. Stayed by yourself? Yes. You have a lot of people living in your house? Yes. Clearly. You are responsible for Mr. Ziggler's damage to his motorcycle because it's your car and you allow lives with you to drive that car who acknowledges that he forgot that he was told, don't move the truck because my motorcycle is there. Is it on tape? He acknowledges it, Mr. Simpson, yeah. on tape. And it's your car. So you're responsible for the damage. And I believe you're also responsible for rent at this new place. You're living in another place now that you like yes. better? Okay. I'm giving you the $700 that you paid in rent for the month because he shares notice. Four, three. Eight, 1834, judgment for the plaintiff. We're done. Thank you. Court is adjourned. It was in a Tahoe. Circle sits lower than the back window of Tahoe. It's crazy. It's nuts. I honestly didn't see any parked on the sidewalk. I'm glad I am out of there. You know, the more cases like this, the more I appreciate your wisdom to always live alone if you can, because problems arise all the time. Yes, it's lonely, but a lot less drama. Mm hmm. Case number 1171, Crockham versus Consales. Please step forward. Jazzling suing her neighbor, Dominic Castales, for car damages after Dominic slipped and fell into her car. I'm going to start with you because there are certain things that are not disputed in this case. Your body slammed in to the plaintiff's parked car. Welcome claims her neighbor, Dominic Castales, owes for car damages. 
Dominic says he fell and hit her car because it was illegally parked. She wasn't in the car at the time. That's correct. When your body slammed into her car, it dent in the car. That is correct. Causing damage to the car. That's why the plaintiff is here. That's correct. This happened on what date? 2020. 2020? Correct. Do you have a photograph of the damage to the car? Yes, I do. I'd like to take a look at it. That's a bad dent. What year car is this? 2013. What kind? Dodge Challenger. Have you had it for long? Still have it? Yes. You were in a complex where you live? Yes. And according to what I read, you were in the pool area? Correct. Anybody with children and a few other tenants. What time of the day? Around 4.30. And what were you doing in the complex? I'm a groundskeeper and manager of the complex. What were you? Um, I opened my door and I was dog watching. You opened the door yeah. of your own apartment? Yes, ma'am. And the, uh, the puppy got out. Puppy got out and... Whose puppy? My mom's. Does your mother live with you? No, she does not. So you were puppy sitting? Puppy sitting. For how long? Just for two days. She's in um, Nevada, uh, Las Vegas. How old is the puppy? She was at the time about four months, three months. Well, there's a difference between two about and four months. Kind of dog. Siberian Husky. So a big puppy. Yeah, medium size. Yeah. Puppy got out, and you were chasing the puppy. Yeah. All around the complex. Pretty fast. <laughs> and it was at that time that you slammed into the plaintiff's car. Um, yes. And now, I'm going to. Me why you think that you're not responsible for this damage. I've read it, but I want you to tell me. Okay, well, where she was parked at the time, fire lane, where you're not supposed to park at, and there's been photographs of her being tagged not to park there. And when I went to chase the gravel on the rocks next to the car, and that's when my body went into the car accidentally and damaged it. I don't dispute that I did not do that. I did that part, but the part it was parked at, if her car wasn't there in the first place, it would have never happened. That's what I... Red is your defense. So your defense was the car was parked in the wrong place, mm -hmm. and if there, mm -hmm. you would have slipped and fallen, but you would have fallen on the ground yes. instead. Yes. Had not damaged her car. Absolutely right. Okie dokie. <laughs> defense? I mean, it's some sort of a defense. It doesn't fly here as a defense, but it's a defense. The proximate cause of her car becoming damaged was your body falling into it. And the proximate cause of your body falling into her car gently let the puppy out of the apartment. That was the reason. You know, if the puppy ran out into the street and ran in front of the car and the car and hit a child who was crossing in the middle of the street, you would say, that's not my fault because the child was crossing in the middle of the street. It wasn't crossing in the middle of the street. It wouldn't gotten hurt. <laughs> you negligently let the dog out. It was what we call. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an on purpose, but it was your fault. More than her fault. It was your fault. If you hadn't let the dog out and if her car was parked, gotten a ticket. She could have gotten towed, but she wouldn't have had a dent in her car. Now, can I see an estimate for the damage, please? Did you try to discuss with the defendant paying for the damage? Yes, I did. And what happened? He admitted, and he said he would pay for the damages. He did? Yes. Did you ever tell her you would pay for the damages? Well, first of all, she didn't approach me with the estimate of her car at the time, or her husband at the time, or still the time, came to my door an estimate of $500, and from what I'm hearing now, it's 2500 so I don't know how... Okay. I don't know either. Was the original estimate that you had $500? Yes. Okay. It was originally $500 because that was just like a quick... Quick look at it. The first estimate that we obtained. Well, if you got a first estimate of $500, why don't I have that? Because that shop is not open anymore. The difference between $500 and what you're suing him for, which is $2,500. Would you look up the value of a 2013, what kind of car? Dodge Challenger. Do you have a full view of the car? Um, Rather than just, this what you're showing me? No. I don't have that printed out. Based upon a 100,000 mile uh, estimate, it's 10,000 to 13,000. Did you have it fixed? We have a problem. Do you understand? Did you have it fixed? No. Why? 
I didn't want my insurance company to pay for it because I didn't want my pre monthly cost to go up. Well, that's a problem. Do you have a deductible? Yes. How much is your deductible? A thousand dollars. That's what you have insurance for. But it was not your fault. Your premium shouldn't go up at all. You better be able to get the car fixed for a thousand dollars because that's all you're getting from the defendant. Judgment for the plaintiff and dollars. We're finished. Thank you very much. Court is adjourned. I'm satisfied. I'll get something out of it. I actually don't remember. It's like a football catcher. Tackered tough. Time to get my car fixed. My shoulder went hit that and I got a big bruise on it after that. Another case where my father's saying comes in perfectly. Is it my fault? Because if so, you take responsibility and accountability, even in an accident, even in something that, like you said, not on purpose, but accidents happen. You have to be responsible for that. That's why they call it an accident. <laughs> He's suing cat breeder Jeffrey Taylor for vet bills and the cost of two Bengal kittens. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case number 1143, Arthur Hughesby versus Taylor. Hughesby. Yes. Your complaint is a relatively simple one. You claim that Mr. Taylor is responsible for all of your cats getting ringworm and being sick, bills, and a whole bunch of other things, $10,000 worth. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mr. Taylor says he felt a certain amount of sympathy for you initially when you had extensive vet bills because he sold you two kittens. Yes. Did he ever pay any of the vet bills early on? Yes. How much did he pay? The approximate, I don't know, but I can tell you it's around 1200 How much money did you pay? I believe 13 something You bought two kittens for him on... What date? May 2021. And they were Bengal kittens? Yes. How old were they on May 24th? About 11 weeks. By the time they're 11 weeks old, they usually get some shots. Had you given them any shots? Yes. Which shots have they gotten? I don't recall exactly what it is, but it's called a four-way. They receive a four-way of shots. It's one shot. Do you remember how old they were? Give them at seven to eight weeks. How many kittens were there in the litter of these kittens? Because you had the litter, correct? Correct. Okay. I believe there was four. And how much does he pay for the two kittens that she purchased? $1,500 apiece. So she paid $3,000? Correct. And you have both parents? Correct. Been in the breeding business? Ten years. When the plaintiff purchased the kittens, was there a contract? No. Is that correct? Yes. Now, you took them off of May. Yes. You had other cats at home. What other kind of cats did you have at home? One Bengal, one years old, and one Calico, 10 years old. Because a year old was a male? Yes. Neutered or not? No. So you planned on breeding the cats? Yes. Because you bought two females? Yes. Is the Calico a cat or an outdoor cat? Indoor cat. And what about the Bengal? Indoor. He's been let out a couple times, but not on purpose. But he's both indoor and he goes outside. He just escaped a couple times, so he's indoor. He's indoor. I'm just letting you know that I'm familiar with Bengal cats. Okay. And they like it outside. They like to prowl. That's after the 24th of May. When did you take the kittens to the vet? It would have been the 29th. Show me. That I brought them. Show me the uh, um, May 29th. I brought the kittens to the vet, and they were. I have to see. Okay. The vets record. You okay. can't anybody told you. Okay. You have to show me the vet's record. They're a business record. Okay. Your Honor, I have um, the next record that Just a record. second. And I'll see what you have. Okay. You, so you didn't bring the record of May 29th? No, but Just it, a second. No. When did you take them to the vet? To the 29th. 7-11. So a month and a half later? Yes. Yes. All right. I'm going to take a look at that. Please, okay. Kevin. There's several of them under you. No, don't grab them all. 7-Eleven. No, no, that's all for that day because it was every single okay. cat. No, I don't want every single cat. I want the two kittens. Okay, so about a month and a half later, yes. the two kittens, as well as your cats, had ringworm. And um, I have the positive ringworm results, but there was another medical problem that I have the other. Yeah, he's not for. responsible for their ringworm. Okay, the problem they had when I purchased the kittens, they were sick, and I have the photos and the, the documents from the vet. Well, let me ask you this question, Ms. Yes. Hughesby. According to what I read here in the doctor's notes. Yes. And I believe that the defendant acknowledges that he said to you, they have that correct. Yes. So. When you took the kittens to the vet, yes, and I say this to you as somebody who is very familiar yes. with cats in my life, probably during a psychotic episode, I'm only teasing about that. 
had six cats, Persians. And, yes. And that was 30 years ago until my immune system crapped out on me and I couldn't be near cats. So these were all long hair cats. So I'm going to tell you a story so you'll understand where I'm coming from. These were purebred that we bought sort of one at a time. We bought a silver shaded Persian. We bought a Persian. We bought a Himmy, a seal point Himmy, and a blue point Himmy. And we loved those cats. We run each time. We'd leave court in the Bronx and run home to our apartment and check on the cats and make kittens and make sure that they were okay. We lived in an apartment, so they never went out. We had them, I don't know, about six months, seven months, and they all developed ringworm. Now, I didn't. My husband knows if he'd had ringworm, he'd be living in another jurisdiction. <laughs> and I remember going to take the cats in their carry, the vet, all six of them, one Saturday morning, and it was pouring outside. And here, we took such good care of these cats for them. There was one small one that didn't like to eat with the rest of the cats, so she ate up on the counter. A little white, beautiful kitten, because she would be standoffish, and the larger ones wouldn't let her get her share. So these were, these were spoiled cats by people who were almost empty nesters. That's what happens. You're not there yet. And we're leaving our apartment building carrying each one of us is with a couple of kittens, a couple of larger cats. And you could see the ringworm around here, you know, little spots it starts to lose hair. Is that what happens? With and jumping from one garbage can to the other in front of our apartment building was this alley cat with a sleek coat. But he took care of it. It took care of itself. It went from garbage can to garbage can. <laughs> Got what it needed to eat, or what it needed to lap up water from the rainwater. <laughs> Found some place dry to sleep, I assume, because it didn't have a collar on, but it was sleek and healthy. As it was looking at us, it could see the kittens through the thing, so it stopped and it opened up. They had beautiful green eyes. And I said, I don't understand this. We take good care of our kittens. How did they get ringed? Arthur Hughesby claims cat breeder Jeffrey Taylor owes for the cost of better selling her two Bengal kittens with a serious illness. Okay, you had these kittens for a little over a month and a half unosed by a vet with ringworm. Yes. And when you took the kittens, they had a cold. You took them on the 24th. You don't have the 4th. Your Honor, I have, um... I have a different record that states the day that they came in a few days after the 24th that they were previously seen on that date. Bringing the kittens in every like few weeks and once a month because of the colds. So I, 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 can't, just, I don't have the second. first one. And you don't have the first one. What else? When you took them in. Yes. And you notified Mr. Taylor. Yes. His response was initially for the cold for those bills. And he did give you $1,300 towards those bills. Yes which you accepted. Yes. Did you at any time, the time you took them to the vet and the vet said they had a cold, say to Mr. Taylor, even though we don't have a contract, I'm prepared to take the kittens back and give you your money. State, yes. When, on what date did you say that to him? About the 28th, so it's about the middle of the week. Of May 28th? Yes, not even a week okay. after. Okay, I... second. And on May 28th, what did the defendant say to you? That they have a cold, their cold isn't getting better? It wasn't a cold, it was a respiratory infection. Okay. Paid for that? Yes. Okay. And So he paid for that. Did you say, or did he say, give them back? Or did you say, I want to give them back? You take care of the rest. Yes, I'm going to tell you exactly what I said. So I'd like to hear it. The vet had told me... Don't, you cannot tell me. Listen to me. You cannot tell me anything. If you have records, business records, like I just read mm -hmm. from the vet, yes. I will see them. Yes. But you cannot tell me what the vet said to you. You can tell me the defendant, and the defendant okay. said to you on the 28th of May. Okay, I do, I do have it in the note from the vet um, that I mentioned to him. The vet said... Okay. That's so, not okay. happening. Okay. That's I, not okay. happening, Ms. Husby. I mentioned to him that they possibly might have... A, a viral disease. I said, if they have this disease, don't, maybe it's just a cold, can I get my money back? And he said, if they have that disease, then he could put them down and give me new kittens. Get my money back. Just a second. So he said to you, if they have that disease, they should probably not be bred, right? Correct. Them for, and I will take them back, I'll put them down and give you new kittens. 
just a second. And you rejected that because we're now at the end of October and you still... Yes, but you just, can't put them just, down just for a that. Sec, just a second. It's you can't? Just a sec. Just a second. If it's not a life-threatening misuse, man, you have to pull yourself together. It's not a life-threatening disease, but you wouldn't want to breed kittens that have that. Exactly. Because, so he said to you, that disease, I will replace those kittens, even though he doesn't have to, because you don't have a contract with him. But he said that to you. You chose not to do that on curiosity, because there is no contract other than she bought kittens, she took them home, you paid for the first round of respiratory illnesses for... You get the results of the tests for those kittens. Do they have that disease? Yes. Okay. So, then... No. Can I see the results of that test? <laughs> yes. There's one more result, too. One second. I just oh, want to here. see... And they gave it to my older cat, too. So it's a communicable disease. It's not a, a disease that's in the DNA. It's in the blood. So that's how they test it. Every uh, shh. They had a, a virus. It's a it's virus. virus. It's a herpes it's virus. It's a virus. Get rid of it. It's medically proven you can't get rid of it. If I don't know that. Your Honor, I have one more that states... Because the doctor, without blood testing them, said this is... Do, do you can what the doctor said? I have said. in here. If you want me to read a report, I will read a report. This is before they blood tested it. On the second page... I'm a reader. That's what I do. Okay, so... It was stating for the respiratory. They put notes in there like, you know, that it has the herpes and that hopefully they will improve. So I, before I got it blood tested, but they knew from looking at it, you I can't, it, it had all the me. symptoms. You cannot tell me what they thought, what they knew. Well, later on, it did what, test positive. Test, it also, and I know that you're upset, and I, I don't minimize the fact that you're upset and that you are attached to these kittens now. You bought these two kittens, tracked. you took them home knowing that they had a cold. If I went and bought an animal and the animal didn't look right to me, I would say, you know what? I'm not taking this. It doesn't look right to me. But you decided to do that. The defendant, who's been in the business for 10 years, said to you, they have cold. That's what I see. He did but, that. Well, you saw that. That's what you said in your complaint. Yeah, okay? but you, like, just oh, a second. nothing. I see it all the time. Just a second. That's all right. You're buying a product to kittens. It's just like if you went and bought a car. And when you started it up, it started to smell a little bit. And the who was selling you this car, it says, oh, they always start up and they smell like this. It's until the oil burns off. Well, if you want to accept that explanation and take your problem, you smelled it, you saw it. The person who's giving you said, well, it's not really a problem. And it may not be a problem, but six months later, it's because there's an oil leak. That You don't have a contract with that person unless you do, in fact, have a contract with them that there's a certain amount of time that you have to check by a vet, and if within 10 days, and I've seen those contracts thousands of times, you didn't have that. You happen to have what to be a legitimate breeder who said to you, I feel badly that you have to take the cats in for this respiratory, and I will pay that vet bill. But then when they develop ringworm, and you have other cats in the house, a month and a half later, the problem, according to what I read, he's not an insurer of your cats. Your Honor, the ringworm came up a week later. I have receipts for stuff that I bought at home before I brought them to the vet. It still doesn't make him responsible. And I went to the courts where we live, and I got the paperwork. They said it was illegal for Just him to sell that. Just a second. You can't tell me what any... ...has accused cat breeder Jeffrey Taylor of selling her two Bengal kittens in... Jeffrey says he offered to take the kittens back, but Jade refused. Okay, what I'm telling you is, you don't have a con- The state we live in, they said it's illegal to sell without a contract and to sell while it's sick. Okay, you have to be able to establish that the defendant's cats were sick. That's number one. I'm gonna ask him a question. Sarah's gonna look it up. Where do you come from? Minnesota. Minnesota. What county? Anoka County. Look up Anoka County sale of domestic animals. There were two other kittens in this litter, sir. Yes. Treated for ringworm. No. Did either of the two people to whom you sold the two other kittens report to you that their kittens had ringworm? But your honor, he told me on the phone. 
oh, my dad had the ringworm because his dad helps him with the kittens. Just put some shampoo and buy some cream. I told him that a week later. A week later, the ringworm came up, and I bought stuff to ho- treat it at home, but it just, wouldn't get rid of it. Just a second. Excuse me. He's not an insurer of your kittens. But he oh. goes... He said they had it over there. Now he's saying that they didn't. Well, just Your a Honor? second. Did he ever... What? Can did you... he Did he tell you when your cats were done that his cats were diagnosed with... Just think about the answer to my no. question. No. He never said my cats also had... He paid the bill. Why did he pay the bill if he didn't think he was guilty? Maybe he was just a nice person and he felt sorry for you. But he's not paying you $10,000. That's the best you can establish to me, and I don't know what the law says. So there is a law that no animal may be offered for sale by a broker or pet dealer uh, until the animal's pet and the rights of the purchaser if within 10 days after receipt of the animal by a purchaser, a veterinarian states in writing that the animal has a health problem that it, of purchasing, they should have two business days to inform the breeder and return and, the animal. And return the animal. Okay. So kittens, according to you, within that 10-day period to a doctor. Yes. And you informed the defendant? Yes. And you were in two days? Yes. And at that time, did you ask to return the kittens? At that time? The answer is either yes or no. Yes, after the visit. And what did he say to you? If they have that disease. No, not if they have the disease. We're not talking about that okay. disease. Okay. We're talking well, about I, I told the cold. Him, yes. We're okay. talking about accepted payment of him for either twelve or $1,300 yeah. for treating them for that cold and upper respiratory infection. Yes. That was the issue yes. because you didn't want to return the kittens. I asked him about getting my money back for the kittens, which obviously I'd return, you know, get the money back. No, if they are diseased, then we will put the cats down and I will give you new kittens. And you said no. Yes. Okay. You can't okay. put the cats down for that. Okay. You have the kittens now? Yes. How are they? They still have respiratory problems. I just brought them in last week. Sick. And I keep giving them the medication. It's because of the disease. It causes r- viral respiratory problems. What do you want to do, Ms. Hughes? You do. Would you return the kittens to the defendant and say, I'm giving you the kittens. If you're going to put them down, put them down. I want my money back. The question is, is that what you want to do? I'm not saying that that's what I will do. I'm just asking you, is that what you want to do? No, they diseased us too. Well, it's, I can't just get rid of them. You know what I'm saying? All my cats are diseased. I mean, I'd have to get rid of all my cats. And what I'm telling you is, you have proof that it's his fault. From the day no. I brought them home, they had symptoms of the disease. Madam, he says that his kittens and his cat for ringworm honor about the time that your cats developed ringworm. So if the kittens brought the ringworm into your house, that means they had to bring them in from his house. But it's possible, possible, that your bangle that does go outside brought ringworm into the house. I don't say it happened. I think it wasn't a contract for him to pay the vet bill for the respiratory he illness. Wasn't He's pleasant. not. He wasn't pleasant, like he was saying. I didn't say he was pleasant. I said pay. But it's... He wasn't pleasant. Pleasant. He doesn't have to be pleasant. You paid him $3,000, $1,500 for a kitten. He's not an insurer of tire cattery. But he sold me a disease. We're cat. done. Thank you very much. Your case Court is adjourned. I felt that I went above and beyond the issues that she had with the cats at the beginning, which I didn't have to do. I hope they do have a good home, and I hope they're taken care of, and I think that she will take care of them. She does seem... You know, I remember that story about you and Poppy taking all of the cats and their carriers back to the vet and seeing that stray cat and I plaintiff because I understand that she was in a tough moral position. She doesn't want to return the cats knowing that they're going to be put down for this disease, but she doesn't want to keep in her home. So I understand, but it's a tricky spot to be in. And sometimes the alley cats, no matter how well you take care of your cat, come out on top. (laughs) They're strong. Well, Poppy called <laughs> yeah. him an alley cat. Yes, I did feel sorry for her. But there's a good legal lesson. Mm-hmm. When you buy an animal, you're supposed to have a contract to provide that you have a certain amount of time, days, mm-hmm. to take the cat to a vet and have the vet make a diagnosis. And if the diagnosis kitten, you feel as if the kitten or the dog or the puppy yep. is sick, you have five days in which to return the animal for a full replacement Mm -hmm. at either your option or the seller's option. That's a clear contract. Here, she paid $1,500. That was no. She saw that the kittens had runny nose and 
eyes. She took them anyway, took them to the vet, called him. He said, gee, I'm sorry. Why don't you just have to say, listen, this is my responsibility. It's not somebody else's fault. Mm -hmm. He's suing her former business partner, Kayla Phillips, for dog show costs, boarding fees, and RV storage. Court come to order, all right. Hello, Judge. Be seated, please. Case 1038 Sullivan. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, there are so many pieces to this case. It's like a puzzle. I'm going to have to separate it a little bit at a time. Miss Sullivan, in probably breeding and showing dogs. Yes. What kind of dogs? Berger Picards and French Bulldogs, and I co own a Beauceron. Do you have pictures to see? I know what a French Bulldog looks like. I'm just curious to see what the others look like. I have a picture of the Beauceron and a picture of my Westminster Top 10 Berger Picard. They're both herding dogs. Yeah, so, okay, and what kind of dogs are you involved in? And Connie Corzos. Okay, this is what I gather. The two of you met at some sort of a show and you became friends. You, Miss Sullivan, who had a long time, decided that you would mentor the defendant and you moved, you had a house trailer. An RV. An RV. That Miss Sullivan allowed you to move on on your property. You said you keep dog kennels because, in addition to showing dogs, you also, I assume, board them. I just was starting to board them. That would have been a good thing to have someone assist you because you do traveling and you do traveling for shows, whatever. Anyway, so it sounded as if it was a good idea to work. It has several parts. There came a parting of the ways of the two of you that was unpleasant, and that had to do with the fact that Miss Phillips was boarding dogs for fee, Dobermans, I believe, and she went off to do a show with one of her dogs asked you and you agreed to mind those dogs, getting paid for taking care of those dogs. And those dogs got into a scuffle with some of your dogs. Some of your dogs were injured. You tried, you were bitten by one of the dogs. Miss Phillips didn't come home fast enough for you. She said, I will come home when I finish the show. She came home. There was a scuffle where you alleged she assaulted you by pushing you. You weren't injured, but it's part of your counterclaim. So that's nonsense. And she left. Owes you for several things. You claim that she owes you for an RV hookup, which I assume means whatever she did with her RV, almost mm -hmm. like rent. Says there was never an agreement for rent. You never discussed rent with her when she moved her RV onto your property. Number two, you say she owes you her share of the national dog show, which you covered expenses for. And you also want the money that she received for boarding the Dobermans because the men, not her. Yeah. She has a counterclaim. She says you owe her money for dog show fees. She says that you assaulted her, which is nonsense. And I don't know the fee services you're talking about. I think it's all a lot of nonsense, but I will get to it and dispose of it quickly. Tell me about the arrangements for hookup fees and rent when she moved in her RV onto your property. She moved on April 12th of this year. On what date did she move out? She moved out on the 17th of May. She stayed. Yes. And. What was she supposed to pay you for putting her RV on your property? Well, the RV, I'm, I'm going to let that month go. Under the circumstances, I let her know that I was going to start charging her the going rate of $40 a day for storage. You mean when, when she, she left? left? And then she didn't... You're just saying, oh. told her that you were going to start to charge her doesn't mean that you had a contract. Did she say, okay? Did she say, I agree to that? No. We did a dog attack and she well, left. Well, then that's not a contract. If she left her stuff there, you could have disposed of it. What did you do with her stuff? Well, she told me I was extorting her and no. brought the cop. I allowed her dad to Just pick a second. Up. Did they pick okay. up the stuff? Fine. Well, you didn't have a contract with her. You can't have a contract made by one side. A contract has to be the meeting of both. So let's get over okay. that, that nonsense. Now, how much money were you supposed to give her for your share of going to the National Dog Show? Originally, it was that she was going to use her companion ticket with Alaska, and that was going to be $100. And then I was showing her dog for her at the AKC National Dog Show. Okay, so she was going to use her companion ticket, plus you were going to give her $100. No, that was going to be a fee of $100 through Alaska at her purchase price for the ticket. Did you work for the airlines? No, I did not. Here's the bills with her name on it and the upgrade May I see it? to have the dogs in Bulkhead and me paying for her dog show fee and half the hotel. 
I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm adding and listening. And that's when she marched up to me and she grabbed my arm that was holding the keys with one hand and my shirt with the other. And she shook me and she was like, give me my keys and cursed at me. So you reached in, got out her car key. I did. iPhone 15 Pro is here. Built with titanium and featuring the most camera yet. Get it with Boost Infinite and transcend to a wireless utopia. The new titanium iPhone 15 Pro on us. Enjoy unlimited wireless in the latest iPhone every year for $60 a month. Mary Ann Sullivan claims her former business partner, Kayla, fell the cost of dog shows and boarding fees. Kayla is countersuing for dog showing fees and an assault. I'm listening. I'm listening. So originally the agreement was that I would show her dog for her while we went. And then after the fact that we agreed on the dates, she then informed me that the ticket was 600 instead of our agreed upon 100. Well, if she didn't get it, she didn't get it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you make any payments to her? No, with regard she informed me that the, she had actually paid the $650 for the ticket, and she did that without consulting me first, because I made it clear that I wasn't wanting to, to go to the dog show in the first place. What else? Boarding fees. What kind of boarding fees are you talking about? She charged $2,000 a dog to board, which was $66 a day for her. I charged $35 a day to take care of a dog and kennel them. So 10 days that I took care of the two Dobermans, because I took care of her four dogs and seven goats. Well, just a second. Did you have an agreement with regard to that? Is my question. Yes. Let's go back. Tell me what agreement you had, when it was made, where it was made, what the discussion was. We both agreed. No, not we both agreed. We discussed that she... When? When? The month before she moved in. The month before she moved in, If I took care of the dogs... I would get bored. I was alone with the dogs when she was traveling, and then she would get the rest while she was there. Did you have that discussion with her? No. We didn't actually discuss anything to her about discussing what our plan was. I got shuffled off like, oh, we'll talk about it next week. So we never officially discussed anything. Well, how could you talk about she moved in? She had planned to bring the Dobermans with her. Were you permanently taking care of the Dobermans? No. When did you start to take care of the Dobermans? The 13th of April. The came in with you the day after you moved on to the property. Yeah, they arrived with their owner, but it wasn't just me. Like, this was a, we were trying to start, but she wasn't very communicative about our agreement. She just didn't want to talk about it till later. And so I was a little confused with how it was working in dogs and doing all the training and stuff, except when I left for the dog show. And you left for the dog show on what date? I left on the 14th. Of May. Try to understand this, Ms. Phillips. Mm -hmm. I want you to explain to me what you brought to the table. So far, she's giving you the property on which to put so that you can live. Mm -hmm. She's providing the property and the kennels for your own dogs and for dogs that you're going to be boarding. She's providing expenses to travel to the dog show. So, airfare, hotel, fees for registering the dog. You must have gotten paid from the dog. I did. You did. And how much did you get paid? $2,000. A day? A month? Per month. Was that for both dogs? Per dog. Per dog. So you got four thousand. I was also in charge of their expenses while they were there, their food. Um, so you got $4,000. Plus she had a and German their, Shepherd. Their titling. How much dollars did you share with a plaintiff? None. Take a breath. <sighs> how much? None. 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 Okay. I'm still confused. When you left on May 14th, you left her in charge of the dogs for just those four days. And the show was your dog or her dog? I brought five dogs with me. I delivered one of her puppies to their puppy owner on my way down there. Whose dogs were either owned or co-owned by me? Owned by you and co-owned with the plaintiff or someone else? Mm-hmm. What's wrong? Uh, oh, with someone, with someone else. I did so our co brought- dog. One of them was our co-owned dog. Okay, is that but correct? she was only there to get her eyes tested, not to be shown. But she brought yes. her. Yes, she and did. And she was in charge. Okay. And was that a trip that you went to by car or by air? By car. How far was it? It's a six-hour drive. Okay, so so far you owe her 600 And how much do you think she owes you for kenneling the dogs? 
I figure that she made $4,000 for the, both the dogs. I took care of both dogs for 10 days. And... Track with her. Okay, but I... I don't okay. care what you figure. Okay. Do you but understand? She was going to pay me board if I took care of her paid dogs. Is that correct? No, because we never discussed it. That's true. She owes you $650. Now let's get to your counterclaim. Well, I also, when I was at the property... Just a second. Now the counterclaim, dog about. So when I show her dogs for her... Not when. Give me a date. A date you showed her dog for her and she didn't pay you a fee. I showed the dogs January 6th. I'm not interested. Okay. Keep going. Anytime. After April, After when you April. all decided to move in, yes, together. Let's go. No, okay. not show her. Okay, dogs. good. What are photography fees? So I took professional photos of her four week old puppies for her to use for her advertisements. And what was your agreement? They're Perfect. So you had no contract. Now you're yes, going to describe. It's now under... you're going to describe the assault. So when I returned back from the dog show, it was late. It was almost mid -muck. I was up. So uh, I got there, I got all the dogs settled in, and I went to bed. I got up in the morning, got up around 6.30, I took care of all of the animals boats that were on the property, and then I then was putting all the dog show stuff away, and she came out, and I waved, and I was carrying a crate, finished putting that away, back out of the shed, putting things away. She had, was walking back into the house, I went in to my RV, she texted me, like, I'm really sad you're avoiding me, and she needed the money from the puppy. Did you give her the money for the puppy? I gave her the money. How much was the puppy? Uh, the puppy was a total of 3,500, but I think that there was only 3,000. The deposit had already been paid, over 500. And so I gave her that, and when I came out to give that to her, she was in her truck, and I go up, and I said, I'm talked this afternoon about everything that happened when I was gone. Everything you mean, the fight where she was yeah. bitten? Yeah, the fight that she separated incorrectly. And, uh, and she cut me off, and she was like, Kayla, I am the most important thing in your life, and I feel very unimportant because you didn't take care of me or my animals. Okay. Of moving off her property without paying her share of dog show costs and boarding fees. Keep going just escalated to the point where she was kind of just talking about everything that she didn't like about how I was there and when I was there and everything like that. And I said, Marion, I'm really, I made you feel unimportant. That wasn't my intention. And that, you know, I, I understand that it's not working and it's okay. And I'm, I'm happy to go home. And then I did that she wanted our co-owned Beauceron dog scout back. And I told her that that wasn't our agreement because two weeks before I met me and verbally returned the dog saying that she couldn't handle the dog anymore. And so that's when it just started to escalate because I refused to return the, give the dog to her. And she decided to take one of my dogs instead. So she went in and got my dog and was dragging my dog to the car. And I got nervous. And so I had her truck keys in my hands and I was holding it. And I was like- So you reached in to the car and you got out her car keys. I did. And holding them and I was like, please let my dog go. Like, this situation is making me entirely uncomfortable and I think we just need to take a deep breath and talk about it when you get back. I'll be. That's when she marched up to me and she grabbed my arm that was holding the keys with one hand and my shirt with the other and she shook me and she my keys and cursed at me and I just kind of held them as far as I could away from my body. She let go of my arm to grab the key and I slipped the lead. The dog immediately came behind me and I went to my RV and got on the steps and just stood in front of them and I repeated that I was uncomfortable with the situation and scared and that I think that we just need to take a breather. And that's when she tried to push me out of the way, off the steps of the RV. What do you mean she tried to push you? Me? She did push me and I just sat down so I didn't fall off the steps. Okay. And trying to get into the RV to get the dog out that she thought she was. But she did No, because I sat down and then I was, she couldn't move me after that. Okay, and then she left in her truck. After yelling at me for several minutes. Okay, but yeah. she left in her truck. She did. Uh -huh. Left. Well, I called several people. I called my mom and one of my good friends because I was in a very sheltered life. I've never been treated like that by another person. But you left that day. I did leave that day. And did you leave the RV? I did. So you left the RV on the property? Yes. And what about the dogs? I took all the dogs. The goats. And where did you take them? I took them to my house, my mom's house in Washington. Okay. When did you come back for the RV? I messaged her that evening, sad about the situation and that I was thinking of her. And then the next day I texted her saying that my dad would be, because my dad has the truck that can pull the RV because it's a fit. I said my dad would be back this week from Arizona and that I could come on Saturday to come receive it. And she responded was all contact will be through my lawyer moving forward. And then. When did you go and get the RV? So she sent me a certified letter 
saying that it was abandoned. Can I see the letter? Yeah. Can I see? You must have the letter. It's a copy of the letter. Well, the letter was sent to not my house. So it was sent to my grandparents' house in Boring, Oregon. That's the address. That I will be Six thirty days have passed for that. Okay, so on June, you wrote to her that it's been 30 days without arrangements of money owed and removal. Her Oregon statute, I have to inform you of the removal. If you wish, please bring cash. On Saturday, that will be $5,822. Well, you already now understand that you can have a one-sided contract. Yes. Okay. Did you move the RV? Her father removed most of her contacts that day and was okay. to come back Monday or Tuesday, and he did not come back to get the rest of her stuff. So what did you... I put it out on the road, and Fine. people picked it up. Okay. But he removed the RV? Yes. Very unfortunate. I actually have a sworn statement. I don't read sworn statements. Because he did talk Just a second. To... Okay. I don't read sworn statements, and you can't tell me what he said, because that's hearsay. And you don't have a case on a do or her $650 for the I cost don't... of going to the dog show. Judgment for the plaintiff. We're However... finished. Thank you very much. Court adjourned. I think that Marianne, when I moved to the property, assumed that I was going to be taking care of everything on the property and not just maintaining the business that we were trying to start. I did a lot more work. She, you know, did, she worked with the dogs and not every day what she was charging for. Extremely upset that I didn't conform to how she handled the situation and unfortunately that's just wasn't possible. And I had him 10 of the 30 days so there wasn't a lot of training going on and that um, I don't want to take care of another person. <laughs> Well, now I'll we'll see her when I see her. <laughs> well, you know, I won't do that again, and I am very sorry that I That case showed that one important thing I learned in law school is that you can't make a contract with yourself. You can't decide on term agreement and sign it one-sided. Yeah, that's true. And th that's true even if the terms are reasonable. And plaintiff had perfectly reasonable terms, only with herself. So you need to... Mutual assent. Yes. <laughs> Mutual consent to make a contract, and there has to be an offer expiration. That's what we learned. So that didn't quite cut it anyway. It was a business relationship that didn't work out. It only was for a month, so nobody lost. They were both very nice people. Yeah. Robinson is suing his jet ski renter, Stephen Rigby, for breach of contract, property damage, and... Court, come to order. Be seated, please. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Kevin. Morning. Case number 1152, Robinson versus Rigby. Mr. Robinson, tell me about this business that you're running. Yeah, so I started uh, renting Wave Runners because I just really enjoyed Wave Runners in around April 15th. Of what year? Of t this year, 2021. What did you do before April of 2021? I have a normal day job. I work in the fine. do that, but this was a side business for me where I was going to make extra income and also enjoy myself on the beach and take out the wave runners myself. How many did you off with just two wave runners? Did you add to the number of wave runners that you had? As soon as I sold the business, because after this incident, I just sold the business. I couldn't handle it. Have the business. No longer have the business. Mm -hmm. So you had the business from April of 2021 mm -hmm. until? July 2021. Yeah. And when you say you sold the business, what did you sell of the business? Or did you just sell the jet skis? I sold the jet skis and then... Oh, stop there. Yeah. them in April 2021, how much did you pay for them? I paid... Let me just pull up the receipt. I want to get this exactly right. Um, Absolutely. This is everything. It came out to 26856 That's for the Wave Runners. And then I bought a trailer with it. That was twenty one. And then other costs like life jackets, gas cans came out to a total of 29500 But you paid $26,000 for the jet skis. Yeah. Let's go back to business. You sold the business a few months later. Yeah. And when you sold the business, you sold the jet skis. Yes. Who did you sell them to? I sold them to my witness. Oh, Nathan, who missed the appointment. <laughs> yes, yes. That's interesting. And did you create a bill of sale for Nathan? Um, yes, I did seller financing. He didn't have them seller financing. You have a contract of sale with him? I do, yes. I'd like to see it. Kevin, would you show me the contract of sale? Here it is. You have a loan on the jet skis. I did have a loan on the jet skis. For I how much? 
18100 Okay, so you were able to pay off the loan, right. yes. the jet skis, and equipment to him for $30,000. No, Your Honor, I, in addition to that contract, I gave him another 17000 You d I gave him 17800 to buy more wave runners because... Oh, well, I don't care what you gave him to buy more wave runners. These were the two that we're talking about in this case. Yes. That you sold to him for thirty thousand five hundred dollars. Um. So that was the total loan amount. But then, if you, then you'll see, I gave him extra money. No, no. Listen to me. <laughs> you didn't sell him for a discount. You sold him for thirty thousand five hundred dollars. Agreed to loan him thirty thousand five hundred dollars, and the loan is secured by collateral. Yes. I assume if you were smart enough to draw up this loan, believe that the collateral was sufficient to ensure that the loan was repaid. Yes, Your Honor. Of course. Mm -hmm. So, in effect, you were whole with this loan. Now, it is your claim that you rented these jet skis to Mr. Rigby for a family vacation. Yes. And you were taking grandchildren. My son has a houseboat down at Lake Powell, and we've been doing this for years. We've been, for about five or six years, we've been renting houseboats for our grandkids to go down there. You mean jet skis? Wave runners. Okay. According to you, he rented them, and they were returned scratched. Scratched, yes, Your Honor. Okay. Do you have photographs of the scratches? I do. Did you ever arrive at your destination, Mr. Rigby? Yes, I did. With the jet skis? Yes, we did. Well, when you load them onto the houseboat, you can go wakeless. So they both worked just idling. So we loaded them onto the... Oh, did you use them, is my question. No. Neither one. We used the one a little bit. Okay. Do you know how it got scratched? Twice from him. We rented them once in May, and then this was the July trip. He uh, charged my son for scratches on the... So my son told me, when you go to pick them up, take a video of the wave runners. I've got pictures of me on my phone and I've got this here to show the, all the scratches on the wave runners. Oh, I'd love to see them. Yes. This is before we even picked them up. Thank you. And I got a video if you'd like to see that, Your Honor. I absolutely would. So, so these were photographed for... Right in the yard before we even picked them up. Now I'd like to see your video, sir. Okay. I, I just want to know, do you park your jet skis someplace, Mr. Robinson, where jet skis are parked? Your Honor, I was out of town. That's a neither yes or a no. Claim, sir, Stephen Rigby is responsible for missing equipment and damaging his jet skis. Stephen is countersuing for the return of his rental to... I just want to know, do you park your jet skis someplace, Mr. Robinson, where other jet skis are parked? Your Honor, I was out of town. Yes or a no? I'm looking here. There are a lot of other jet skis. In this case, yes, Your Honor. All right. So in this case, the answer is yes. You park yes. where there are a lot of other jet skis. Well, this is July 23rd at 8.57 a.m., mm -hmm. which is when you pick them up. Okay. And they look certainly drivable, but they're certainly look used and they're scratched up. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Now, Kevin, would you return this is up before Mr. Rigby took them? Now, you have a video that Nathan just handed you. Yes. He wants to show me what he allegedly took on the same date. Is that what you want to show me, Nathan? Or you didn't take a video of the same day? It's not the same day. Then, I'm not, then I couldn't be less interested in it. So, Mr. Robinson, let me try to explain this to you, sir. You bought these in April. Did you buy them? Brand new, Your Honor. And you rented them between April and the end of July? Yes, Your Honor. And you used them? Yes, Your Honor. How many times did you rent them? Maybe 25 times? Yeah, maybe 20. So let's say 20, 25 times. And how many times did you personally use them? I only went out once, Your Honor. And what, go out in them? Once. Oh, just a second, once. So you rented them 25 times, you went out once, he went out once. Well, somebody scratched them. Because what I'm telling you is his photograph I've just looked at and his video of July 23rd do not show me 
brand new, three months old, normal wear and tear by one person using them. There are scratches on them. They're scuffed. You know, I don't use them often and have a couple of years, but I have used jet skis and some are carefully taken care of and some when they're rented a little bit. Yours were banged around and you sold them for what you paid for them. So I don't know what you're complaining about. So, so here's some more pictures when we picked them up and you can see more scratches than I did. I video. can't differentiate, sir, between what scratches were there and what scratches were not to use this device to figure that yeah. out. Mm -hmm. Because you have a bill for me, I assume, from a mechanic. Yes, Your Honor. Who fixed up all, and I assume, without looking at it, that the mechanic doesn't list where each scratch is located. I assume that there's a general bill for cleaning up the jet skis. I may be wrong. If I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. Yeah, it's a general. Then there's no way for me to differentiate between what the scratches and nicks and dents that were in the jet skis in the video that I just 23rd and your mechanics bill. So what I'm telling you is you had no damage. You sold the equipment for what you paid for it. You rented them, according to you, 25 times between April, May, June, and July. So you don't have any damages because I assume you made money. I assume you rented them for money. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so you have no damages and there's no where the scratches are. With the sale to Nathan, I gave him an additional 17,000 to get to that 30,000 that I sold it to him for. So that we would actually sold it to him for much less than 30,000. Well, that's not, I may have missed it. So you gave him $17,000. Instead of making the note half, you gave him $17,000. Yes, I don't understand that. So in this, for Nathan, he needed more than just one set. And so he had to go out and buy new sets. And so I gave him an additional $17,000 when I sold it. my problem, sir. That is your convoluted business arrangement with him. But your loan agreement, the collateral for the $30,000 of the two jet skis. Any uh, wave runners he bought after that would also be under collateral. If you look at the collateral, it will... It should... oh, that's okay, but at this time, he hadn't bought any. At the time of this loan agreement, which was for $30,000, yeah. you had the collateral for this loan agreement. Who, are they Kawasaki? Is Kawasaki. that what they are? Yes, sir. No. Jet skis. Absolutely no way for me to determine what was damaged and what was not. I saw it was clear that scratched up when he picked them up. Now, according to you, missing revenue, damaged jet skis, forget that. Loss of revenue, forget that. The missing equipment, okay. What equipment was missing? Life jackets and a gas can, and then there's a rod that carries the, they took that rod as well. Well, I don't know who took it. Yeah. They, would, they would have no use for that. Yes, Your Honor. Do you, you know what I mean, Mr. Yeah. Robinson? They would have no use. Kids. And how many life jackets did you provide? Six. Mr. Rigby, were there life jackets? No, no life jackets, Your Honor. You had your life jackets. Was your wife with you? Not when I picked them up, no. Okay. But She's my fiance, Your Honor. Nice, good for you. Mr. Robinson. Yes, Your Honor. You told me earlier, I believe, Whitney, I believe Mr. Robinson said earlier that he had his business right after this incident. Is that correct? Had it in April, sold it in July. He said after I bought them, I sold the business. I could in uh, April of 2021. Until That's when he July. bought it. Yeah, until July 2021. And his rental was, it was the 23rd, and you had two jet skis at that time. Yes, Your Honor. And then you entered into this agreement on the 27th with Nathan, in which you secured as collateral the life jackets. I bought it. So, so what you just, so what, jackets, just a second. You want me to believe in, well, I'll believe if you show me a bill that between the 24th and the 27th, new life jackets. Yes, Your Honor. I, okay. I did. John Robinson is accusing Devin Rigby of renting two of his jet skis and damaging them. Stephen claims they were already damaged and one jet ski didn't even work. So me to believe in... Well, I'll believe if you show me a bill that between the 24th and the 27th, 
you bought jackets. Yes, Your Honor. In addition, I did want to say he actually ended up taking the wave runners without anyone being there. Like you said, he he missed wasn't he told him he's going to be there at 10 o'clock, but he showed up really early and took the wave runners without signing an agreement, without calling me, and that, that's why we have to report it to the police because he took the wave runners without signing the rental agreement or paying full for them. So in this year, no text. I want to see a bill from a sporting goods store for life jackets between the 23rd or the 24th of July, 27th of July. So Nathan bought him and then I Venmoed him. Do you want, do you have that on your phone? So I Venmoed it. It was an eBay purchase. I don't care about eBay, but I want to see a receipt for life jackets between those two dates, 27th and after July 24th. Here's a Venmo of me Venmoing him for those life jackets. Nathan's gonna have to get me them. Right here, let's see. And the date he bought them. You bought one XO Blue Universal Adult Size Life Jacket. Is that right? It was, it was a pack of four or five. For $59. I don't remember, yeah. I don't remember, okay. <sighs> you didn't take any life jackets? No life jackets, you're right. Okie dokie. You have a counterclaim. How much of a deposit did you give to the plaintiff? $900. On what? The wave runners. On the 23rd. I see that you dropped them off someplace. We dropped them off back at the marina at Antelope. He told her to use the wave runners, so we had to haul them all the way back to the marina, and that was on the 25th. And. Tell me what happened with the pick range. Nathan over here, who I'm not interested in their business arrangements. It all sounds a little sketchy to me. He was out of town. Nathan would change with you, give you the paperwork. He was supposed to pay the balance on the 23rd, correct? Correct. And what time are you supposed to meet him? I got a text message, John Joseph, about a week before. I've been up to his house. I went up and inspected the wave runners. I seen what they looked like and they looked, they were brand new. I was really a week before we were to pick him up before July 4th. It was on July 17th. He sends me a text saying, I'm out of town. You're going to have to pick him up. He gave me a name. He gave me an address. I've got the text that he sent me. I'm going to look at it. I t you want to look at it? Yeah. So you had been to see them and they were brand new when you saw them. When I went, that was back in, yes. And then we move forward to the end of July. Right. So that's the text he sent me to pick okay. him up. No, you can see no name, no nothing. I tried. Well, first I said thanks. The next day I called him because I wanted to talk to him. But what am I supposed to do? Who am I supposed to talk to? Well, what he does on his phone, and then it says my voicemail's full. You can't leave any messages on his phone. So what I did is I called Rental. I don't remember who I talked to. I'm picking you up. Can't, you can't tell me what they said oh. to you. No, I mean, I told them I was picking up some wave runners that was John Joseph Robinson's. Are you going to, he said. But you can't tell me what he oh, said. Oh, okay. You went there. I went. Did you ever make an appointment with Nathan over here? Never, never. I talked to, when I talked to him down there. Stand up, Nathan. Tell me when you had, Nathan, a conversation with the defendant. Listen to me, then you're going to show me on your phone. The conversation with him, okay? On what date? Take out your phone. Your Honor. Just a second. Take out your phone. Now tell me on what date you were with Mr. Rigby. Your Honor, it wasn't on my phone that the conversation happened. It was on whose phone? When he called rental the day before to ask how I happened to be there at the time. And the guy there. You can't tell me what he said. Gave That's me hearsay. The phone. He gave me the phone and, I'm, and I told him, meet me at 11. Just a second. So you told him to meet you at 11. Yes. Is that honor. right? Let me tell you what your partner over here swore to in his complaint. Let me tell you what he swore to. Since I was out of town, I left the chair and trailer at a third party's house, which was not so. You left it at a launching yard. Nathan, my witness, was to meet Stephen at 10 a.m. That you want to see your signature? You got to get your yes. story straight. Yeah. Do you understand? You got to get your story straight. The first thing that you have to witness is get your story straight. You owe him $900 back.
down. Is that what you paid him? That's what I paid him. That's what you're getting back. Your case on the counterclaim for $900. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Judge. Court is adjourned. I thought he, he was a good guy, but obviously not. I think it's spot on. I called the police because he never signed the rental agreement. Am I supposed to sign something? Am I supposed to, am I supposed to pay you guys? He says no. They abandoned him in a parking lot. Judy. I learned a good lesson from that case. The defendant did a great job taking a video with a timestamp before he even took the jet skis plaintiff's property or wherever he had left them. And I think that's a good lesson for everybody before you lend someone, even a friend, anything of yours. You know, take a photo or two, just verified uh, document that you could show in court, just like the defendant did here. So we did our job today. You <laughs> learned something. Thì ở đây mình sẽ đặt tính nhá 561 này Trừ đi 42 Ta có 11 trừ đi 2 bằng 11 trừ 2 sẽ bằng 9 Và viết 9 này Nếu 1 vào đây 4 thì 1 là 5 6 trừ 5 bằng 6 trừ 5 bằng 1 Và ta có thêm 5 này 5 đại số là 500 519 Đó vậy 561 trừ đi 42 Sẽ còn là 500 519 Thì video của mình đây cũng hay rồi Tạm biệt mọi người đã nhỏ lại Rồi video tiếp theo Những bài tập tiếp theo nhé Tạm biệt